Good morning. I hope you have a great stream today. Wow, eight months. I'm extra glad to be here today. Three months a eh? Why did the Scarecrow get a promotion? What the heck going on? Why the fuck are you guys talking about me getting married? What's what's wrong with you? Uh, this is like a new new uh new record for me asking you guys what the I'm fuck is wrong with you, but full year okay, Ben Bev okay. Um Yeah. Good job, chat, for outdoing yourself. <laughs> There's like five of you that are like, is Ben married? Like, where did this come from? Where did this come from? What What is wrong with you? Yahoo. I thought someone Friday said you were. Ben's favorite colors and the funny Irish text huh? speech man. <laughs> someone asked, "Are you married though?" Did my reaction not clue you in that no, I am not? <laughs> Why would you <laughs> If I'm incredulous about you guys asking about my marital status, that probably means that I'm not married. Settle down. Also, if I was, yeah, exactly as Yasumi said, if I was, it's none of your business well, anyway. <laughs> so, settle down, chat. But, uh, besides that, yeah, wild way to start the stream. Besides that, how are you guys doing? I hope you, you guys have had a good week. Hey, what's up? We here, woohoo, we here. We here, woohoo, we here. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a good St. Paddy's Day. Um, and I, is Ramadan still happening? If you, if it is, then happy, I hope your Ramadan is going well. Yeehaw, hello, Ben. Yeehaw, hello. Now, I already have, Yasumi, you don't have to worry about that. I have a button to turn off Ooks if needs be. Um, but yeah, happy, happy week. I, I know I told you guys that I was going to stream on Thursday, but, um, I, uh, had a very st vocally stressful session on Wednesday. 
Uh, and my voice was just gone. <laughs> I was just dead. Um, and my, my allergies have just been really shitty, too, so it's just been like... <clears throat> um, so... That's, that's been the thing. As you can tell, the, uh... The, uh, stream layout is, um, a little different. Chat's a little smaller. There's a new fancy little latest sub and latest gift at the top left. Are you the voice actor for Wheelie Store Employee in Fe Final Fantasy? Yes, I am. Thank you so much for noticing. Did the bit sound change against my permission? Nuh-uh, I'm not letting this happen. Um... Are you allowed to tell us what the recording session was for? Obviously not. Um, but... Are there any Undead Unluck fans in chat? Because... You probably know what, what, uh... What f big fight happened in Undead Unluck. And, uh, yeah, so that one, that one took a bit of, uh, bit of work. Wait, hang on. Uh. Anyway, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was just a really heavy session, so my throat was like, Ehh. Um, yeah, so new chat layout, because <laughs> here's the thing, guys. Here's what happened. Um, I have my, uh, stream elements, like, source, and it was, like, limited to half the screen. Like, hang on, let me, let me see if I can exemplify this with, a. Uh, with a with an image. Just give me one second, chat. As you can tell, my voice is still a little bit um, sc sc scrunky, scrungly, because allergies are still kicking my ass. Like there's just there were some heavy winds a few days ago, and like they've just been they've been really, really screwing with everybody. I think. Like they kicked up a lot of pollen, so now everybody's just like. Um, but we're, we're surviving. Anyway, uh, as I'm gonna, as I'm gonna exemplify, um, this image of Peter Griffin, this is, this image represents how my, um, how my, uh, stream layout was set. Like, the area where Peter is, is all of where stream elements' stuff was. Like, it was just shoved to the left. Why Peter note though? Don't worry about it, chat. Anyway, so what was happening is that everything on like this side of the stream was like hidden. Cause only only this part of the of stream elements was like being captured on the stream. So now I've got it so you know it's Peter is covering all of the stream, and it's like correct now. You know? I hope- I hope I'm explaining myself to you well, chat. I hope this is making sense to you. Why did it have to be Peter? Why not? Do you have a problem with Peter Griffin? Spin. Anyway. Um... Yeah. So that's... That's, uh, that's the thing that I fixed with, with, uh, the stream. So, like, chat was way bigger than it actually was supposed to be. So now you can see it's a little smaller. Um, if you're watching this not full screen, you might not see it as well, but... It, uh, it is good now. We, we are, we are gaming now, is what I mean to say. Um, we're gonna jump in again, Shh. We're gonna do some Genshin. We're gonna probably get to 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 Kaveh's introduction. 
Um, but I'm just buying time because I needed to update the game. <laughs> um, but yeah, another thing that I have news for you guys. Uh, could one of the mods be so kind as to type in exclamation mark YouTube? Hey, look at that. VOD channel is up. And I uploaded the first stream to it already. Um, I'm gonna be uploading the rest of them. They're all gonna go onto that channel. Um, I'm gonna try and maybe get some edited videos in there. Ben VOD channel because right now what's happening is that it just has, it's gonna have the exports to, um, like I'm just gonna be exporting my streams directly to that channel. Uh, but I'm gonna see if I can get some edited ones. Yeah, Finn, this is exactly why I did it, because... <laughs> uh, so all of the streams are gonna be exported directly to that channel, uh, and it'll make editing, uh, a lot easier, I think. Um, speaking of, Fenfrog, um... Wait, hang on, let me just check something real quick. Check for one, one thing, one super quick thing. Um, yeah, I do want to get some some like actual edit because like I think I think what I need to do is is like have a um have like my stuff bleeped out and everything. Uh, but Finn, if you would be so kind as to hit me up on Twitter, like on DMs. Uh, I do have a, uh, a business proposal for you, so please, at your nearest convenience. Um, nothing completely unrelated to the new channel. Promise. Have you ever been asked to say your character's voice lines in other languages? I think in the first stream, I did a cave line in Spanish. Which you can watch right now on the VOD channel. Um, but yeah. Oh, I have to press the update button. I keep forgetting to fucking do that. Um, Russian? I don't speak Russian. Unfortunately not. Ben be a real streamer now. Dang, this whole time I've been a fake one. Yes, there is there is a VOD channel. It is in the there's a pinned there's a pinned message right there. Right there, guys. It's right there. That's not what I meant, Ben. What do you mean? Hi, Am I pulling ben, for Ito? To Canada in May to visit a friend. Yo. Hopefully we'll see you at Oterfest. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh if you guys, you know, quick reminder for you guys, I'm going to be going to Calgary in May for Odafest. So it's going to be it's going to for all you Canadian homies, uh, I will be there. Ben, what if Kave had a little sister or brother? I don't know. It's fiscal. Yeah, it's the fiscal year. Will I play Void Stranger today? Probably not. I'm still, like, recovering from what happened in that game. <laughs> and also, the first rooms that we did in hard mode, I'm already, like, dreading going back to that game. It's gonna take me forever to get through hard mode. Ugh. Anyway, I've got... I've got to... Uh, I've got to start thanking subs, so... Blueberry Cave, Void Beanie, Miss Slothrop, Prismatic Amy, Bubble Roaches, Di Day and the Goddess, I Only Date 2D Boys, Rat Girl, Shrimp Dimp, Jupe Tube, Someone D25, Two Cover Up Road, Mocha24, Tajizuma, Screaming Inside 01, Mary Cat, uh, Zinth Pop, um, Aoi Mia Kisser, uh, 
uh, Effin Sayuri, uh, Kedyomi, and Carnival. Thank you so much, y'all, for the subs. And to Biblio Curiosa and uh, I'm Gracie. Thank you so much for the gifted subs. And I only date two, two D boys as well. Thank you so much, I'm Gr uh, Gracie, for the five gifted subs. Thank you, guys. And Wittich Tara, thank you so much as well. Really appreciate it. Anything to recommend me to draw the stream? Still on that art block trend. I wish I wish I could remember. Um, there was there was like some advice that I saw on Tumblr about how to get over art block. I think there's nothing funnier than just like fantastical characters doing incredibly mundane things. That's probably why I like Smiling Friends so much. Because that's, that's all of the comedy in Smiling Friends is just really silly boys doing doing just dumb shit. Dumb normal shit. I have to sleep, but hope you'll have a nice dream. Thank you so much for the uh, the sub, by the way, Mikave. I'm on Tumblr? Yeah. I mean, I don't use it as often as I used to. But, like, I still... It's a very good source of shit posts and good art for me. It's... It, it's... It's just my little hidey... Hidey hole. <laughs> Someone said, Are you that old? <laughs> did we... Did you miss... I guess you missed the stream where I said I was 31. And everyone was like, You're 31?! Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's happening again. <laughs> um, ASVM Noodle, my name is Fenny, Noah Solano, and Tata... Tata Talia. Thank you so much for the subs. Yeah, I'm old. We're all gonna die soon, chat. Remember that you are mortal. Death is not an inescapable, uh... It's a promise we all have to have to keep in the end. So live life to the fullest. The following stream is brought to you by Persona 3. <laughs> You're dying faster than us though. <laughs> what a thing to say. Holy shit. I mean, I know Crohn's disease cuts life expectancy by a bit, but like you don't have to put it that way, chat member. <laughs> yeah. Relax a little. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what do you think 31-year-olds sound like? I mean, I'm glad that you guys think I'm- I'm- I sound younger than I am, because, um, that's just- it just makes me feel- But really, I don't give a shit about my age. Like, I- I don't see myself changing as I get older. If anything, I'll be- I, I hope that, uh, whatever happens, I'll turn into a cool old guy when I'm older. You know, you know, like, um, Mr. Hanakoma from The World Ends With You? I want to be like that when I'm older. Cool sunglasses old dude who doesn't care. Uh, and he gives good advice to edgy teenagers. Funky old man, exactly. Yeah, I know 31 isn't old. Like, even though... Here's a, here's a fun thing for you guys. You know, you know Auron from from Final Fantasy X. Can you guess how old he is? Like, this old-ass aging dude with, like, gray... gray hair? He's 35. You got this, like... Yeah, I'm... I'm old, and no I... I've, I've been fighting sin for ages. Oren, how old are you? I'm 35 years old. Yeah, Sid Highwind is 32. Like, that's okay. fucking ridiculous. 
JRPG characters are... The way people treat age, IRL, on the internet, is how JRPG characters treat age. Where you have this grown-ass adult person, and they're like... Like... Like, 19. And then you have this ancient old man, and he's like, 31. <laughs> I'm the oldest person in the world. How old are you? I'm 42. Is 31 too old to become a VA? You're never too old to become a VA. Ashley Riot was 35? That actually makes me feel a lot better about myself. Man, Vagrant Story is such a fucking good game. I really wish they would remake it. And also, you know, I want to I want to read for Ashley Riot. If that ever gets a remake, that would be such a sick role. How tall am I? I'm six foot. That's only if, like, my posture is correct. I I have, a like, a hunch. So I, I usually am 5'11". But if I actually stand up straight and correct my posture, I'm six foot. You sound short. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to like chat's mental image of me is like this this like four foot three old man. <laughs> it's like yeah, I'm taller than Nazi, but I think Nazi sounds older than I do. Yeah, so Danny DeVito, there you go. You've put it together. You've 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 discovered the secret. That's why that tag is there. That Danny DeVito tag wasn't there because because of me uh, chat. It was because of you. It was your your cognition. Who's Danny DeVito? Uh just wanted to let you know, uh you know, just a PSA for everybody. This is a plus 18 stream. Alejandro sounds mid-size. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him you called him mid. I know, I think he's gonna be in the... Is this the start or the end of the stream? I won't get tricked again. Margot Madness, thank you so much. Um, you can look at the current stream up time on whatever viewer you're 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 watching it on and you can see that I've been streaming for about 24 minutes uh, which obviously means that the stream is ending so goodbye everybody uh, let's go right now I'm just kidding I'm just I'm just fucking with you we're I'm just waiting for for uh, for uh... <laughs> why are you guys saying bye stop <laughs> Um, I'm, I was just waiting for, for Genshin to, uh, update. And it has, so I'm gonna boot it up. Shiny, thank you so much for the raid, by the way. And Nyap, Nyapya, thank you so much for the sub, and AZP23, and Strawberry Swisher, and Chaos Kuma Live, and Real Coffee Kun, thank you so much for the subs. And Creative Jelly, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Supreme. Wait, not to Supreme. The latest guff, the latest gift thing is broken. Oh, there we go. To Lisa Sendi, thank you. And yeah, thank you for the soup time, I will have some soup. But first I gotta log into this the video game. I really wish I could mute the, uh music while it was loading so we can just keep having uh gamers. keep having gamers do you think Kave is alive we haven't seen him in seen him in like nine months chat member I don't know how to how to tell this to you I don't want to have to be the one to tell you Kave isn't a real person he's a fictional character in a video game May I have a link to Ben's Discord server? Yeah, dude, uh, just uh, hit exclamation mark Discord.
Frat girl, thank you so much for the biddies. You're doing training at your new job at the hospital? Oh, dang. I, I know a lot of friends, I have a lot of friends that are working medical, and uh, it's quite the doozy of a job. So, uh, Godspeed. Ganbare. Kave is not real, then explain how come he got pregnant. Explain. Um. This is the part where I nervously looking. I'm, I'm nervously looking around. Uh, as if. as if waiting for a, uh, a psychologist to magically appear. Anyway. The Z is vertically challenged. Uh, Permaban that you... No, I'm just kidding. Don't make fun of the Z. Don't make fun of my boy. Anyway. First Sayu and now Ben, what did you guys do to Alejandro? What did you do? <laughs> oh, it's uh, you're doing the pregnancy thing for for him to okay. I don't know what to tell you. We last visited the Knights of Avonius. Paimon wonders what Jean and Lisa have been up to recently. Project Baby? <laughs> Baby? Is this why you guys were were doing this? Is this why you guys were saying your 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 words? And we're not gonna go see the Knights of Favonius. We got shit to do. There was probably a more direct waypoint that I could have traveled to, but I don't care! Will I promote Kave? Like... Like, class promotion? Like, Fire Emblem? Yeah, I'll promote him to a... to a, uh... To a Wyvern Knight. There won't be any problems if the feast starts at that time. Everything has already been prepared. Mr. Zubair, I finished telling things up here. Well, except for the guests. <sighs> Is a simple reply really that much to ask of our guests? It's affecting our arrangements. Hell yeah, Wyvern Knights are awesome. Hell yeah, they are. Oh, it'll be fine. Besides, it never hurts to get things ready in advance. HTTPS LR, thank you so much for the sub. And Fruity, thank you so much for the sub as well. And Nyapya, thank you so much I for the biddies. The, same thing. Lo agradezco mucho. the feast will be held sooner or later, right? OMG, is that Kaba's VA playing Genshin? No way, and ways, hi Nanabi Hathamthus is fine. That was. Yeah. I love how much the uh, text-to-speech struggled on that one, but thank you, Nani Bean. Hey, ben, what is your favorite type of bread? Bread. Traveler, hi, man. Um, marraqueta. Or or a nice baguette. Jupiter Baby, thank you so much for the sub. You're the best. The other guests haven't even replied yet. <laughs> Two different people are like, so you hate sliced bread? So you hate rye? Listen, 
If if you guys don't agree with my choice of marraqueta, you obviously haven't had it. Huh? Are we the only ones so go to Chile, get some marraqueta, have that shit. You don't even need a spread. You don't need like a spread for it. You can just eat that shit fresh out the Thank fresh out you. the oven, <laughs> and it's it's good. It's great. It's delicious. Ben, I'm broke. How am I supposed to get to Chile? You will find a way. Yeah. I had someone deliver letters to all of our guests. But maybe everyone is still busy with other things. Ben, I think it's our thing that you just say something and we say, so you hate so-and-so. Yeah, I know. But I can I can engage with the meme when you guys do it too. Look, I get it. Sumeru is in an extremely important period of transition right now, but even if your friends are important figures, they shouldn't just ignore your request like this. Has probado la focaccia de cebolla. Es que no puedo comer cebolla, entonces... No. Nope. Pero me gusta focaccia. Nilo is Sumeru's number one celebrity, after all. <laughs> Someone said, Ben, what are you saying? <laughs> What's... <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I was speaking in tongues for a second there. <laughs> you have no idea how happy I am to talk to people with good taste. If you consider enjoying Nilu's dances having good taste, then almost everybody has good taste. So true. Because Paimon thinks everybody will love her performance. Also, I think, um... I think Tuesday is when I'm going to be doing the, the Spanish stream with Alejandro, so, uh... Para todos los chiquillos que hablan español, por favor, el martes vamos a tener nuestro nuestro eh, nuestro programa en español que vamos a, a jugar. Un, que, creo que uh, keep talking and nobody explodes. That's right. We all think she's amazing too. Yes, it's on Tuesday. Nilu is an absolute favorite among those of us who frequent the Grand Bazaar. For Outlanders, you have a great eye. Did I say what time? No. Uh, I don't know what time. We'll we'll announce it. So don't worry. Master Zubair. No sé qué hora. Pronto. Audience members next time. I think these two may win. Nonsense. It is not for us to determine the value of an audience. But indeed, we could try giving gifts to people with particularly good taste. I heard there's a device in Fontaine called a camera. That can record people's appearances as pictures. Such pictures would make superb gifts. Pregúntale, pregúntale a Alejandro a qué hora es, porque yo no, yo no sé, no gacho. Él, él, él es el que está organizando todo el, todo el asunto. Is this the AQ? Yes. Ooh, good idea. I wonder where we can find one. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Really there was like a girl schmoving behind them. Just being able to perform here. You got a Spain accent? Okay. What do you mean? What <laughs> Spain accent is like... Como, como estáis ustedes? Joder. <laughs> Weón, soy chileno. ¿Qué chucha estáis diciendo? Acento, chile, acento español. ¿Cómo? Exijo una explicación. Ah, bueno, de Andalucía sí, eso. Ya. Yeah. Ahí te tení. Tení un, un. It makes sense. Traveler in Paimon? Could you help confirm if the letters were actually delivered? If for some reason they didn't receive the letters, then please tell everyone that there will be a feast here. Yeah, we can also check out how everything in Sumeru is going now. Can I can I speak German? Nine. Mm. When I wrote the letters, I heard that Dia was in Port Ormos. Wait, is this the Archon Quest? You just played a lot off stream. No, I did not. This is literally where I left off last time. You can I now that I have the VOD channel, I will upload the VOD of the last stream and you will regret your your words. 
As for Sino, we've only heard that he appears at the Academia from time to time. I'm not too sure about Rahman's whereabouts. Like My we guess is that he's with Dia. We, 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 killed, we killed the small child. We killed the child, and he fell out of the robot and landed with, uh, with the uh, iron pipe dot mp3 sound. Ben, I, I'm, I'm going to play Void Stranger later or not? Probably not. I don't know. I really do want to go back to Void Stranger, but at the same time, I'm just like, Ugh. It's gonna take us so long to get through that shit, man. I'm gonna have to use all three of my brain cells. <laughs> As for Junior Zod, I just hope she's feeling better. The ramen and pasta I debate? That was last stream! But I was afraid of disturbing her. If you have time, please ask about her for me. Okay! Traveler. He fell in Watch Us Say started playing. Man, that's such a good video. I like that. When do you expect to play Unicorn Overlord again? Probably sometime soon. God, it's such a good game. But I'm also juggling like four different games. Like I'm playing through FF7 Rebirth and uh, P3 Reload, Unicorn Overlord, and when Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out, I'm going to have to play through that as well. And uh, I already made my 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 arisen and my pawn for for that game. I'm very excited. I should like probably get rid of these exclamation marks, huh? Once there was a glorious gamers. If you could voice any character in Fire Emblem, who would it be? And why is Nazia's Lex and Alejandro voices Yuri? What? Huh? What? How? How? What? 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 Huh? What? Huh? Nazia's Lex? Who is? I don't. Is Nazia in Fire Emblem Heroes? I completely forgot. How do I make it so the uh, the trail of uh, thingies shows up again to lead me to, uh, the, the quest. What button is it again, chat? I forgot. V? Thank you. <laughs> Best Organization 13 member? What a wild question. Uh, it's obviously Luxord. Yeah, what do you mean Lugzord with four question marks? He's rad. All of his fights are fun. Oh, excuse me, Luke Sword. How is Nazi? He's doing good. We talked uh, a few days ago. We haven't seen Olhatham anywhere. Uh, let's ask that person over there. If you if you guys start getting too crazy with the ooks, I will I will I will take care of it. Um, we'll emote only as soon as I when as soon as I walk into the uh, into the library. Cause uh, I you you boys, you boys can't be trusted. Boys gender neutral. Yes, it seems Scribe Al Haytham has gone to the house of Dana. You should be able to find him there. But you're already the second group of people I've seen looking for him today. He must be quite the busy man. Did you get... Did you give him a gift you usually exchange? No, we talked over Facebook. We don't live in the same state. Oh? Who else is looking for him? Mr. Cave was just here asking about him. But you wouldn't believe how terrible their relationship is. And now you two are here. <laughs> Kave mentioned. Kave, I am pointing at the. I am doing the 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 pointing meme. Don't tell me everyone's here looking for gossip about the sages. Stop. Not right now, chat. Hold your ooks. Alright? 
Hold your rooks. Hold it, okay? <laughs> I'm so happy that I found this image because it's so it's so useful for my stream. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna let you go. All right, just hold on to your ooks. <laughs> <laughs> just just the one went Sorry, through. I thought maybe everyone's as interested in rumors about the sages as I am. Chat. Don't make me don't make me <laughs> grab you by the hat again. All right. We're going to walk into the house of Dina and then we're going to switch to to sub only mode. All right. As soon as as soon as the loading screen pops up, mods, just switch it, and then we're gonna all enjoy this, and we're gonna be respectful to the performance. Because this was my first time being in the game, and I was really excited about it. It was it was really good. Gamers, you saved me. Monkey. All right. At least hold your ooks until after after his first line completes, okay? And as soon as it's done, no, uh, uh emote only. Yeah, you're it's it's correct. Um as soon as that's done, then you guys can unleash the ooks. All right? So you're having a bit of trouble there, yes, me. <laughs> All right, there he is. It's after so many, so many streams, we finally got here. Hey, what's up? So true, Umfi. Oh, Hazem should be around here somewhere, right? Hold. He might not have time for us. Just put down that worthless book and tell me what happened in the academia. Okay. Yari, -yi, smiley face. Thank you, Creative Jelly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> This is the most I've seen in any of the streams so far. Holy shit, the simultaneous bullseye nice? Alright. Alright. All right, settle down. All right, we're you you that's that you guys legit have broken the activity feed. Like the uh the one that I used to track the subs and everything, it has legit crashed because there's been so many redeems. So fantastic work, chat. Great job. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> You've actually crashed the activity feed. It's like gotten completely wiped. Uh so Let's let's just let's just watch the scene. Okay? Let's just watch it. Cuz uh this is a long time coming. This is why I'm streaming this game. So let's just watch the stream. And I can give you commentary on what it felt like to record. This is not just some worthless book. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to find a physical book like this in Sumeru? It doesn't matter. It's probably just another thing that you used your authority to get your hands on anyway. Just put it aside. Listen, I came back today only to hear that the sages have disappeared. So, recording for this was... I, at this point, I already knew that, that uh, 
you know, obviously I knew that Nazi was playing I'll Hate Them. Um, and that informed my reads so strongly when I first started recording, because it's like, I knew that I was going to be with Nazi, and I knew that I was going to be playing off him, and, like, w during the process, you know, the director was giving me Nazi's lines, and he was just reading them to me, and then I was responding to that. But I would always picture Nazi's voice saying these lines, and that's that's what helped a lot. And I think Nazi did the same thing when he knew that I was playing Kaveh, and, like, that's why he sounds... He gives a little extra something-something when I'll hate them stalking to Kaveh, so... It's just... It's... It was... It was really fun. Um, I also have vivid memories of people... I watched a lot of people play through this scene. Because I wanted to see how people were reacting to it. And so many people were like, Wow! He sounds kind of, uh It's not the voice that I was expecting for Kaveh. I was hoping he'd be a little, a little bit higher up. He sounds a bit too deep. And I was like, Oh. Okay. Alright. Cool. Uh, but then, you know, Doubters uh, in shambles. And uh, who's laughing now? You fucking worms. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. People are free to... People are free to... Uh, to think of my voice as whatever it is that they want. Um, I, I'm just here to, to do my job. And if people enjoy it, great. If people don't enjoy it, um, that's okay too. You, there's four languages that you can play this game in. Uh, so pick your favorite. Anyway. Oh, you sound surprised. I thought you would already know the inside story. Would I be here asking you if I knew? You're the scribe, not me. So just tell me what you know already. God, if you... I recorded this like th it feels like it's been th like three years now, two years since I've recorded these these lines. So it's kind of weird for me to hear myself like this. Well, I almost became a sage. Huh? I gave them a much bigger huh, and like this is this is the take that they picked. Uh, for all of these lines, I gave them an A and a B, sometimes a C take. Um, so. There might be versions of a line that you don't like that are different in the cutting room floor. Who knows? But, you know, the directors and the editors, they... Th I trust them with my life. And I I think that they pick the best uh, takes of each of them. Because I can't be trusted with these kinds of decisions. I just give them different takes and they... It's up to them to choose which one is the best one. So, the the lines that you hear, guys are the ones that have the most uh, thought put into them in terms of, like, delivery and choice and, and editing and all that. So, never think that a line in a video game is, like, thrown away. Like, everything is 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 vetted and, and carefully considered. Oh, don't sound too surprised now. You're the renowned Kaveh, light of the Kasharawar. Besides... As a master builder and craftsman, chances are you'll be appointed as a sage too. Hmm. Why do I feel like you don't really mean it? I remember reading also on Reddit that people were like, I think Kave should become the next Grand Sage. Um, and I like that theory. I, th I, I think it's cool. Huh. What makes you say that? Why would you question my heartfelt sincerity? Maybe it's because you've never said anything good about me before. Yeah, well, I share a similar sentiment. And anyone who knows you as well as I do would surely do the same. Oh, you... <laughs> There's so many... I feel like I've done so many versions of you dot 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 exclamation mark for this character and like... This one is the most important. Nazi! Guys, Nazi's in chat. Can we can we get a can we get a round of applause? For Nazi. Mind mind the ooks. 
This is a library. We can't we can't be ooking in here. Chad? I swear to God. I swear to God, Chad. Stop! <laughs> you violated the law. Um Okay. Hey Nizzy. I've just been telling I've just been telling Chad about how uh you can't spell books without ooks. <sighs> Alright. Uh good stream everybody. I'm uh I'm 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 out. I'm done. I'm just I'm just kidding. Good good retort, as always, Nazi. So thank you for that. God, I was just telling them about, like, how I... Knowing that you were playing this character informed a lot of my reads. And is... Is the reason why I sounded the way I did. See? This is why I hate discussing anything with you. Your ridiculous and arrogant attitude always gets in the way. There's the meme face. <laughs> Good ook placement right there. Good job. Um... <laughs> It seems that you really can't stand my personality. Ha! Huh. What was your first clue? <laughs> There's the other mean face. God, this cutscene... Like you. <laughs> this cutscene... Right? I was thinking the same thing. That this, like, we... How long has it been since we recorded this? Like, three years? Two years? Well, then you might as well move out of my house. Are you threatening me? Stooping to a new low, I see. At least 14. So true. Ugh, and don't change the subject. You, a sage? What a joke. The academia might as well just close tomorrow. Are they having a fight? Yeah. <sighs> Forget what's going on with the academia. Haven't you been busy with your construction project? Tell me. When are you going to build yourself a mansion? Don't get me started. I get angry just thinking about it. <laughs> so, what great building did our master architect work on this time? Like I need to tell you. Keep your nose out of my business. No, I think we deserve to know. Where were you when Sumeru needed you most? I was in the desert for a large project. But considering like Ravitat's <laughs> utter ignorance of architectural and aesthetic matters, you probably wouldn't understand. <laughs> Large project like you. Good. Oh, which is truly unfortunate. I can only pity the man who doesn't understand the first thing about beauty and romance. Unlike a true... Uh, hold on, uh, wait a second. What do you mean by when Sumeru needed me most? I think with the last, like the line before this one is when I actually, like in the session is when I really hit my stride. And was like, oh, okay, I've got this. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I understand the character now. Well, while you were out fiddling around in the desert, many people came together to save Sumeru from a crisis. Ha! And you think I'd believe that? Like Look, you. <laughs> all you really need to know is that Azar and all his accomplices have all been overthrown. Huh? What nonsense are you talking about? <laughs> it's no skin off my nose if you don't believe me. It's not like my Darshan was the one trying to apply for funding from the Grand Sage. Hmm. Yours, though, on the other hand. You know what? I'll ask around. I'm sure someone knows what's going on here. You're dead if I find out you're lying to me. Threat. That was a threat. Gamers. There he goes. All right, you can you can turn off sub only, uh, uh, emote only mode now. We're making we're making our way to him. Yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna see the secret scene as well. <laughs> Biblo Curiosa, thank you so much for the gifted sub. Like I, as I said before, it was it was just interesting. Like this is the first time a um, 
a, uh, like a character that I was playing had this amount of like eyes on him. So it was, it was a little nervous. It was a little nerve wracking. Um, Katie Diddy, thank you so much for sub subbing with your prime sub. And Akitoya, thank you so much for a thousand biddies. Te imaginaste que Kabe iba a ser tan popular de ninguna manera. I was I was keeping an eye on stuff and like when when you know they told me like oh he's gonna be a, a, a four star or something I think that's when they told me uh, I was like oh he probably won't be too popular because you know with mobile games like this you know the 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 four stars are usually more cringe than the five stars. So I was just like, eh, you know, I, I, it's like it's probably just gonna be a dude that shows up and and has some some niche usage, and then I was only looking at it from a gameplay standpoint. Is the thing that's the pro that was probably my biggest mistake is that I, I was only looking at it from a gameplay standpoint, where I was like, yeah, gameplay wise, he's probably not gonna be meta, so it doesn't matter. And then I got jump scared by popularity. <laughs> My life has not known peace. Oh, it's you two. What's the matter? What's the, what's the matter with you? It, it, do you have any, uh, agabagool? We're running some errands for Nilu. Have you received her letter? Letter? She sent out a letter inviting everyone to a celebration feast in two days at the Grand Bazaar. We'll also be celebrating Zaino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. Gamers! If she addressed the letter to all Haytham of the Academia, then the letter should have gone to my office. Ben, you did fantastic, and it couldn't have happened to a more deserving person. Don't make me cry on stream, Nazi. But thank you. I'm honored to be on this journey with you, my friend. No, you are not my friend. You are my brother, my friend. I've been busy these days, so I haven't had time to check for any new mail at my office. I only now have some free time to attend to personal matters. If none of you, if any of you don't follow Naz on social media, go do that now, or I'll, I'll punch you. Or, just kidding. I'm not going to physically threaten my viewers. Of course not. I'm only busy these days because several sages have been dismissed recently and the whole academia was practically turned upside down. You don't have a Twitter? Good. Stay away. <laughs> it's bad. It's cringe. Tainari told us they all went to train in the Avidia Forest. Apparently they will spend the rest of their lives there. No, but Nazi, I should tell you, like, I've... I, I didn't realize how cool your character was until I played through this and, and saw the... The cool shit that you do in your backflips and your jujitsu, your Brazilian jujitsu, which Alhatham canonically does. That is already the best possible ending for the likes of them. Four of the six great sages were possessed by their desire for power and attempted to create a new god. In order to pull it off, they even imprisoned the other two rational sages. To imagine such things could take place in the academia. Hm. I don't know where to begin. Yeah, you're right. Huh. Feels kind of strange to hear them called that after all this time. But then again, the six grade schools sounded pretty impressive too. The six grade schools? Yes, at least that's how they're supposed to sound. It's said that when the academia was first founded, the Dendro Archon herself established the six great schools, each representing one of the six different types of wisdom. Numerous Darshans have sprung up and faded. Only the six Darshans attaching themselves to the six great schools have stood the test of time and obtained permanent seats in the academia. Now, the six Darshans are nearly synonymous with the six great schools, and the leaders selected for the schools are the six great sages. Among the six great sages, there is one central leader, the Grand Sage. Unfortunately, only the sages from Vahumana and Amorta remain now. 
They were imprisoned for opposing a czar and were only rescued after a czar's down. I heard that breath and I could tell like <laughs> when you were recording this. You, that's when you realized, oh, <laughs> this guy talks so much. Uh, I felt the same way when I had to do my longer, you know, long form monologues during the uh, the, hang the hangouts. So who's managing things in the other four schools now? Do they need to find someone new? <laughs> he only speaks in Bibles. <laughs> Nah, man, he only speaks in textbooks. And Kave only speaks in, in design documents. Yes. Normally, new sages are selected based on a strict set of criteria. He said based. Could, could somebody clip that and uh, just have that on hand so I can maybe make, the, make that a redeem? Becoming a sage? If they pick you, then we'd have a huge connection in Sumeru. Yes, about that. <clears throat> you didn't let me finish my sentence. The person in charge of personnel affairs nominated me to be the Grand Sage in place of Azar and help Lesser Lord Kusanali manage the academia. But I refused. Did you and Nazi meet through Genshin, or did you already know each other before? No, we we knew each other beforehand. <laughs> Henlo Ben Tilder am finally in Sumeru and about to meet the Nurge. How should I prep? Which which Nurge? There's many of them. Thank you for the sub. I'm assuming you mean uh this one. Um just uh tighten up your core, tighten your glutes, and just dive right in. I'm not even interested in being one of the six great sages. Like I said before, I don't like being a leader. Oh, all right. <sighs> so are you busy these days trying to find others to take the job? Shane Foxa, thank you so much for the sub. How did you two meet, Ben? Um, so I was hanging out at a bar. And, uh, you know, I was minding my own business, having myself a, uh, a Moscow mule. You know, listening to some music. Um, and across the bar, uh, there was this guy who was staring at me. Um, you know, I, I, I thought he was looking at someone behind me, but no, he was staring right at me. Um, so, uh, so um, he, he, he like did like this head nod thing. Um, like he, he wanted to, to get my attention. And I didn't really understand. Um, and then the bartender was like, uh, "Here, here's another Moscow Mule for you, cur courtesy of uh, the gentleman down the uh, down the bar." And uh, the the guy again, he did that head nod and gave me a, a little wink. And I I I didn't know what to feel. I was I was I I didn't understand what was happening. I was just there for a drink. Um, so I started to feel kind of weird. Um, and, uh, I decided to leave. I left the bar. Um, and then I sat at the bus stop, and there was this other dude who was just sitting there. And he said, hey, nice shirt. And I'm like, thanks. And he said, for a loser! And that was Nazi, and that's how we met. What subplot am I listening to RN bro? Thank you for the sub blood script one. <laughs> I made all that up right right then and there. I was I was just talking. That's not my job either. I'm only responsible for handling important affairs within the academia before the new sages take office. <laughs> and, yeah, Nazi, you, you knew where I was going with that. <laughs> Starting off with... I don't know who that guy in the bar was. <laughs> Just kidding. I do know who that guy in the bar was. You know who that was? Barack Obama. <laughs> and the first thing I'll do is reject Kisharawar's application for funding.
Um, but no, it's, I think, like, there was, like, a, like, a house party or something that we, like, a small thing that we did, and I think Nazi was there. I think it was, like, a Smash Bros thing. I don't know if it was... No, I don't think you, you went to that one. We just hung out because, like, our, we had mutual friends. Did I get beaten in Smash Bros? No, I'm pretty sure I- no, I definitely won. Um... Every fight that I- I did that night. I'm good at- I'm good at Smash Bros, guys. Real question, Ben. Do you need to know how to sing to voice act? Nope. I don't know how to sing. And I'm in... A billion things. How did your first conversation go? Homie, you're asking me to recall... Like... Like, something that happened four years ago or something. That was the conversation. I was- I was monkey. Do we look like friends? Who's my go-to in Smash Bros? Uh, Dark Samus. His name is Kave, my roommate. You could say he's the representative for Kshawar scholars. Uh, I love. I just realized the stank on you could say like, could he's, yeah, he maybe he's the representative, not the official one. Um, Jagerus, thank you so much for gifting a sub. God, you, this, this line read, Nazi was dripping with so much condescension. You, you did such a good job. Which is exactly why he always has so many problems. I, I love that line too. That's a good one. So everything that's happened recently must be a huge change for the people of Sumeru. Such is the work of the Academia Scribe. Well, anyway, no matter how busy you are, since you are our planner, remember to attend the celebration feast in two days. All right. I'll see you there. Changed history right here. Yeah, re really tiny, imperceptible smile. Alright, we're gonna do the super secret, um, true ending cutscene. You guys don't need to tell me how to, how to do it. I, I know how to do this. If you didn't get this cutscene in your version, you tr you did not get the true ending. Where, um, Kave, uh, ascends and becomes a five-star, and, uh, his, uh, burst summons a Gundam. Uh, Olesia, thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it. Oh yeah, they moved to another part of the, uh... Oh no, yeah, they're right there. This one is also really fun to record for. This is getting out of hand! Now there are two of them! gone to the Avidia Forest to reflect on himself for the rest of his life. And those people say they want you to replace him as the Grand Sage? What have you done? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Azar's downfall is of his own making. What does it have to do with me? Everyone out there is saying something different. Some say Azar wanted to create a god, while others say he wanted to sell his power. <laughs> but none of those sound very likely. If you ask me... I think the people spreading rumors around here don't have access to any real information. He, he, he knows, chat. Does he know? He knows. Really? Oh, then I'm sure you can use your abilities to uncover the truth for yourself. Oh, can't you show just a little respect to your senior and explain what's going on? 
You were out there all this time, and yet you still haven't managed to learn a single crucial bit of information. Hmm. Bye, Nazi. I'm impressed. I love you. Fine. Apart from the leaders of Amorta and Vahumana, all the sages have been exposed and removed as Azar's accomplices. We need to select new sages for your Kasharwar Darshan, as well as my Haravatat Darshan. I just love how he, he like, he puts on this tone that's like, I'm gonna explain it to you like you're a fucking four-year-old. Like you're the dumbest little baby that the world has ever known. What? Did my Darshan <laughs> collude with Azar as well? Wait, could this be why they sent me out on a project? Yeah, that Watts, I I put my whole my whole soul into it. Oh. I think that's just a coincidence. Besides, whatever you were doing won't have any significant impact now or in times to come. You <clears throat> Listen here. I'm not buying any of it. Don't try to use this as an opportunity to talk about your crazy theories. I think there are a few details that everyone is overlooking. For example, how, as the scribe, you were somehow able to escape this political crisis completely unscathed? This can easily be seen as the results of a power struggle, no? Yet nobody has stopped to point that out yet. I almost feel like I should go out and start telling people about that. I, immediately after I said this line in the booth, this was, I think this was my second take, um, I immediately followed it with, I feel like, I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! Be my guest, but I think everybody will be more interested in your own well-known gaffes. Do you know what? I am done with you. And there it is. Super secret, never before seen. I don't have Nahida, I can't do the mind reading thing. But I don't think, uh, I don't think in this scene, Kaveh has any mind-reading, uh, lines. You should have kept that in. It's not my choice to make. I say a lot of stupid shit in the booth that they don't keep. If they did keep it, I probably wouldn't have a job anymore. <laughs> Anyway. Have I ever sworn as a character I've played? I mean... Yeah. I'm not gonna tell you which one, though. I pulled an Alex Lee. I don't think Alex Lee invented the concept of saying funny things in the booth, but I appreciate it. This is poor Ormald. Hmm. Now where could you? Uh, what? Is that Paimon I hear? What? What? Why did? Why did Paimon get? Cut off. I don't think I've I don't think I've seen that happen. I didn't click anything. <laughs> what happened? Huh? huh? It's been a while. How are you doing? Someone stole her ook. ¿Cómo conseguiste ese planeador? Uh, creo que ese es de, de... The Prime Gaming? Hubo un evento para ese, creo. I'm doing well. I can go as far as saying I have never been happier in my entire life. Uh, someone before asked what's the hardest cave line I did. Basically, any of his super long, long-winded monologues about, like... 
aesthetics and all that stuff, those are really hard to say because he gets so passionate about things. And I have to, like, for me, passion equals, like, speed. So I have to get through these lines fast with high energy. And that's really hard to do while saying words like aesthetics and architectural architectural aesthetics and and all that shit it's just it's tough he is a yapper i don't know if you've heard but elazar has completely disappeared and all the patients have recovered can you say your favorite line you voiced for kave when we get to it i'll point it out Are you kidding knowing them and the connections they've got i'm sure they've heard about it that's right. My lady is feeling better now, so I'm accompanying her for a walk. Why do you still call me that, Dia? You've already informed my father of your resignation. <laughs> I guess I'm just used to calling you my lady. Old habits die hard. Resignation? You mean you're quitting? Yeah, I might start losing my edge if I keep being a bodyguard for the Homoyanis. You know that my parents and I are fond of you, and that we appreciate you very much. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be a problem if you wish to continue to be our bodyguard. What did, what did she mean by this, chat? When am I going to do the Kave hangout when we get to it? Um, so, we got to get through... We gotta get through, um, I'll hate them story quests first. <laughs> I'm not a woman that's easily persuaded. You should know that by now. My when I took this Whoops. job, I had already decided that I'd quit as soon as you'd recovered. It's time for me to get back out there and chase that horizon. Hell yeah! So what are you gonna do now if you're not gonna be a bodyguard anymore? <laughs> I wanna take a risky job. And put my body to the test again. Put your body to the test? I hope my body can take it. Huh? But we literally just finished one of the most dangerous jobs ever. Are you getting bored already? That was a deep cut of a reference I just made. I know. If I hadn't joined in that plan with you, I wouldn't have come up with this idea. I guess I still get fired up by that feeling of going all out in a fight. It made me realize that I'm still a mercenary through and through. She just likes to kill. Life is short, and I'm happy that I got to be a part of that operation. But the whole thing also made me realize that there are still many problems in Sumeru. And as a desert dweller, I'm still not completely ready to settle down on this side of the wall. Well, I remember a friend had someone bring you a message. You mean I'll hate them? <laughs> I didn't expect him to still remember that. I thought he was joking. <laughs> I thought she was going to say, oh, you mean I'll hate them? <laughs> He's not my friend. We just came from talking with I'll hate them at the academia. Did he tell you that he suggested that I come work at the academia? What? I heard that a czar and his cronies fell from power. And all Haytham told me that now was a good time to find a job in the academia. But only if I wanted to. I mean, she would be a good fit for, um, the, the fight, Darshan. Is that Spontamod? Whoa. Paimon can't see you being anything other than a mercenary. Not as a matra, but like the, uh, the, uh, the fight club Darshan. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. Oh, but I think Dia would look great dressed up as a scholar. It's just, yeah, like, Sino was part of Spontamod as well. Like, eventually, I think she could become a Matra, but, like, Spontamod is al alchemy? Which one is it, then? Spontamod is for ley lines. Spontamod is mathematics? What? I'm going to look this up right now. No, yeah, like, that was Sino's one. It's for el elementalism.
But it's the one that Sino graduated from. So it's the Elemental Reactions one. A.K.A. Fight Club. Ugh. Ugh, forget about it. I wouldn't last ten seconds in there. There's no fight, Darshan. That's what they want you to think. I'll hate them probably just like the way I worked and knew I'm good in a fight. So he suggested I find some work in the academia. But you know, if you take him up on the offer, Sino might actually agree and let you become a mantra. Because you're super amazing. <laughs> the mantra have all the talent they need as long as they have Sino. I prefer to be free to live however I choose. In fact, I chose this job from the very start because I knew it'd be right up my alley. Even if being a mercenary means facing all kinds of danger. A lion has to return to the wild sooner or later. If anything, being your bodyguard has been unfamiliar territory for me. I think that lady has been walking in the background for this entire cutscene. I don't want to see you go, but I'll respect I can still hear the footstep sounds. I'm glad to hear you say that. Come on, no need for the sad face. It's not like we'll never meet again. Once the whole Dendro Archon thing is settled, everything in Sumeru will take a turn for the better. That makes me happy too. I think that lady's also in, in the Fight Club Dorshan. But a peaceful society will probably mean less demand for mercenaries like me. Before long, we'll be a dying breed. So I'd better get to work while I still can. What what Darshan would Dia be a good fit for? Vote now on your phone. Cause I think I think that she would be good for Spontamod. There's the footsteps again. Kasharwar because of the mechanical arm? Uh, I mean, I guess. Maybe. Well, no. Not yet, at least. I promised my lady I'd stick around until next week. It's Patama just so she can keep the red color scheme. So, have you found more Ormonds? Not Amorta. Oh, it, well, that's obvious. I'm wondering if you had received a letter from Yilu. I I wouldn't see her uh, go getting into Ratawist or her avatar either. Oh, uh, did Milu write to us? She heard that you were seen in Port Ormo, so she sent the letter here. Huh? It was probably sent to the inn that we're staying at. My lady has been very energetic lately, and keeps taking me on hikes, staying out even into the night. By the time we get back. The receptionist is usually off napping on the job. What would I choose if they were real? Probably Kasharwar. Not because of the architecture part, but because of the technology part. I've I've always been a, a tech nerd more than anything. Right, and we tend to leave quite early in the morning, so the old man on duty is also usually dozing off. Yeah, Kasharwar is kind of, like, the most loaded, in my opinion. Like, it's got, like, architecture, sure. But, like, all of technology is, is, is under, is under Kasharwar. That encompasses so much of life. It's like having a, a, a college in a university that's, like, has all of STEM and, like, plus architecture, plus, um plus, like, art. It's not just engineering, because I think it also encompasses mathematics and, and, um, and programming and, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's steam. <laughs> like, Haravatad is just linguistics, or, like, etymology. And, um, and Amorta is just, like, bio... I guess just biochem? And, like, ecological uh, studies? And Ritalwist is just fucking... I don't know. 
astronomy. <laughs> Haravatat, yeah, it could also just be, like, English literature. And Spantamat is just, uh, uh... I guess it would kind of be physics and chemistry, but for, for Tevat exclusively. And Vahumana is just, uh, like, Sosh. So what it really sounds like is that the person on duty is always asleep. Retalwist is Genshin's NASA, but, like, it's... It's... It, it's without the spaceships. They're missing the coolest part of, of NASA. I bet the letter's at the reception desk. I'll go check later. No wonder there wasn't a reply. You never received the letter. Good thing Nilu asked us to come and check on that. They haven't gotten your, there yet, but, like, they should. They should. They have the technology. Ah, uh, sorry to make you two come all the way out here. It must be something important for Nilu to specifically write to us like that. They'll break through the sky and then run into yes. the Honkai She's Star Rail train. In the Grand Bazaar. And we'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. It's She's all connected. Great. I'll be sure to attend. Count me in, too. But is there some sort of dress code or anything for the feast? Can I just show up looking like this? Well, Dia, they didn't give you another skin, so you will show up like this. Since it's being organized by Nilu, I don't think she'll be too picky about that. If anything, I think she wants to see us as our most natural selves. All right, then this is how I'll show up. The feast will be held in two days, so don't forget! Sure. Thank you so much for letting us know. We'll see you there. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know where Sino and Raman are? The General Mahamatra always comes and goes without a trace. Normally, no one knows his whereabouts. Oh. But last time we met, he mentioned that he had something to do in Aru Village. You can try your luck there. Ben, if you could enter any fictional world, where would you go? Um. As for Raman, your guess hmm. is as good as mine. I only remember he said that he had something to discuss with Sino. You can ask Sino when you meet him. Don't Something. It. You better get going. All right, on to our next stop. <laughs> Somebody said Mario Kart. <laughs> could you could could you could you imagine having to Mario Kart for the rest of your life? Do you have what it takes? How do you record the running climbing sounds? Like, do you have any specific methods? I pretend as if I'm running without actually running. That's, that's it. I wish I had a more, uh, I wish I had a more, you know, useful answer for you, but my, my acting method is just, I just pretend. I just pretend. It's it's that it's that um that Ian McKellen uh, video where he talks about acting. I think I've mentioned it a few times now. I should really bring it up and and show it to you guys. It's been a while since we last visited Aru Village. Can we see your favorite Kave line now? We're not at the hangout yet. Isn't acting just professional pretending when you really think about it? It always has been. It's always been professional pretending. What brings you here? We recovered well, and Tanari agreed to let us leave. So now we're out and about again. I think Sino's like... Probably... 
If Kave wasn't part of the conversation, I think he's probably my second favorite uh, Sumeru character. It seems Gandarvaville's medical treatment is still as good as ever. Mm -hmm. And Tainari is recovering well, too. That's good to hear. Yeah, you're the one who brought us to him when we lost consciousness, right? Thanks for that. You're welcome. Tainari has excellent medical skills, and Kale is quite attentive. It was the best place for you. No, Alhatham was my first favorite. Sino would be second. I'm saying if Kave wasn't part of the conversation about favorites, then Sino would be the second favorite. Obviously, Kave is my favorite because I, he's the character that I play, but I'm saying if he wasn't part of the conversation, it'd be Sino. Third would probably be Dia. But why are you just standing here like a dead tree? Wait, you like Haytham more than Kaveh? What? Media literacy really is just completely fucked, isn't it? I'm meeting some people. Oh, you mean Candace? Who's my least favorite? Like out of out of Sumeru or out of all of Genshin? I've already talked with Candace and the village chief. They're still at the usual place. You can go there if you'd like to see them. But you know one of the people I'm meeting as well. That out of both? Um, I don't know. I, I feel bad saying, oh, this, this character is my least favorite. Because, like, I know a lot of the people that play these characters. And I don't want to... It feels bad saying, oh, this character's... Like, hey, friend... The character that you voice is my least favorite. Even if it is personality-wise, like, I just, I don't know. I feel bad about it. I'm here to spread love, not hate. Oh, by King Jeshret's blessing, my friend suddenly appears in the desert. <laughs> don't tell me you've run into trouble and need us to help now. Um... I will say that uh, Kokomi left the least amount of impression on me. I cannot remember what she did in the story. She just kind of showed up and was like, we will help, and then did nothing. Roman! And, huh? Sitarium? Oh, you know me? Oh, well, uh, you're pretty famous in the academia. Don't worry. These are our friends. No need to be so guarded. What do you mean, Nilu moment, moment, chat? She, she did something. She did something in the story. I see. I'm doing well. Many good things have happened recently. Same here. Really, I feel that my whole life has started to shine after suddenly finding a new direction. Oh, tell us everything. Kokomi healed and then appeared for Enkanomiya. I didn't do Enkanomiya, so... Whoops. Yeah, you go ahead. Alright, well, I suppose I should start by saying... I've decided to leave the academia. Dropping out of school. What? It's not that I've given up on being a scholar. Instead, you could say I've found a new identity. I will no longer pursue research like a typical scholar, but I have not completely given up on my relationship to knowledge either. I, I, I'm really, it's so funny seeing so many people not like Dory when I think she's one of the funniest characters in the game. She legitimately, like, she's just incredibly entertaining. <laughs> I can see what you're saying now. Like, everything she says is fucking great like she's just a gremlin and it's it's funny uh what do you mean i plan to leave the academia and return to teach here in the desert i think one of the problems that this game has is that it tries too hard to have all the characters be be likable i don't know if that's the right word for it but like like, have them be 
lovable. Like, oh, they've just got fun little quirks. Oh, they're still cute. You, you know, they're so cute or they're so cool. And, like, Dory is refreshing because, like, she's just like a fucking money gremlin. Like, it, that that's what makes her interesting. Yeah, there, some characters are too vanilla. They don't have any spice. And that's why I like Chiori, too, because, like, I've seen clips of her, because, uh, my friend Brittany voices her, and, like, she's interesting, because, like, she's, she's kind of prickly, and she's, she's got, like, attitude. I like that. That's good. But, you know, I've, I've already seen people getting upset that she's too mean to to people in her demo, and I'm like, what the f like, are people allergic to having interesting characters in this game? And the same thing happened with Wanderer, too, from what I remember, where people are upset that Wanderer had an attitude. Like, can- can we not have- are we not allowed to have just characters that are interesting and not just neutral, vanilla, you know, rated PG-13? Let characters be assholes. It's fun. It's interesting. Sitaria will return to support education here and teach people from the desert. As a Xiaomain, I heard a lot of people say that he was too emo. Come the fuck on. She can't teach everyone on her own, but there are many of us Eremites all over Sumeru. She came to discuss a collaboration with me and hoped that I could bring her ideas to the Eremites. Yes, it's my hope that the Aramites can help me select a group of smart people with the best aptitude for teaching. I'll teach them, and after they've finished learning from me, they can go educate more people. That is the true meaning of education and the spreading of knowledge. Look, let me, like, because, like, the, the, I, the thing with Xiao is that, to me, he feels a lot like, uh, like Sino. Where he's got like a lower kind of, I'm I'm this kind of character that talks slow like this, but I've got a little quirky quirky thing every now and again, and that endears you to me. There are a couple of characters like that in this game. I feel like Razor is also kind of like that, but he's also funny because he's a caveman. Yeah, he was the original of those kinds of characters. But I think, I think... Oh, God. I don't know. Not all characters need a redeeming quality. I think we, there should just be some 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 gremlins, some go, some goblins in the game. I think that just gives it gives it more variety. It makes the world feel more real when when you get a uh, when you get get some get some bastards in there. Cuz uh what I what I like is if a character is just evil and they 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 don't have like a tragic backstory that makes them like oh well it, they're evil because their childhood was bad no i just want to like somebody who's just an asshole because that's just how he is that's why i like volgan so much in metal gear solid 3 he's just an asshole he does just evil shit because he, he it's fun for him Dottore is a good example, but like, I can already tell, I can already tell, chat, that they're, like, if they make him playable or whatever, they're gonna release a trailer and it's gonna talk about how he has, like, oh, well, he grew up in a poor neighborhood and he had to fight for his life and that's why his attitude turned out the way he, he, he did. Like, can't he just be an asshole? Because he is. Let evil people be evil. 
Like, Disney has been doing this so much lately. Where evil characters need to have some kind of stupid backstory to justify them being evil. Why can't we just have somebody that's just bad? The people of King Deshret suffer from sandstorms, exile, and ignorance. Miss Ataria is more than welcome to come teach here. Her arrival is like a star shining in the desert night. The stars have always guided caravans, thieves, soldiers, and travelers who get lost in the night. They lead those in the dark out of trouble and back to safety. Oh, please. Where is all of this coming from? I'm starting to feel a little embarrassed. Ben, if you could choose, would you be a villain or a hero? Would you rather be a saint or a Grinch? Um, I don't know. I am who I am. You deserve these compliments. Mercenaries are accustomed to danger and don't fear death, which is why we recognize extraordinary actions that common people would easily overlook. Sataria's idea will bring much good to many people. At first, I feared it was destined to fail. <laughs> Everyone knows that the Academia doesn't allow scholars to teach in the desert without permission. <laughs> Are you a walking soundboard? Did, did you catch that reference? I've been, I've been thinking about the Grinch's ultimatum for, for a while now. It's such a good video. As you know, all knowledge is under their surveillance and control. And very few desert dwellers are as lucky as me. But what I heard at that time has been haunting my heart. As if there were lightning bolts constantly bombarding my soul. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Sataria, you tread a treacherous path. And the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become. Sataria, why haven't you gone home? Never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies is elsewhere. That, is that the Grinch video with the gunshots? No, that's the Gunch. I'm talking about the Grinch's ultimatum. <sighs> Miss. These words sparked something in me, and I knew that I had to bring something back to my people after going home. I gathered up the courage to approach the Grand Sage, only to find that he was no longer at the Academia. Lord Sino told me that Azar didn't belong there anymore. I think that's why I like Xenos a lot in FF14. Like, he does have a tragic backstory, but he's, like, aware of it, and he just doesn't give a shit about it. Like, he, he's fully aware that he's become a shitty person, but he just doesn't care. He's living life his own way. Azar has received much needed punishment. Though, if you ask me, it may have been too light. You probably have already heard. Lord Sino helped me obtain permission to leave the Academia for the desert. And accompanied me here to discuss collaboration with members of the Aramites. Yeah, same with Kefka and FF6. Kefka was a good villain. Um, I also kind of like Cipher in in uh, in FF8. He, I think he was the same way. I don't think Cipher really got a redemption arc either. I, I never was the biggest fan of Sephiroth as a as a villain, but playing through Rebirth has made me appreciate him a lot more. I think that that like now I'm kind of getting why he's so popular. Like it's making me realize like yeah he was, you know what yeah Sephiroth was a good villain. I'm just I I'm biased because I love FF9 and I think Kuja is a really good villain. Um, but yeah, Sephiroth is good. My plan was able to go smoothly thanks to him and Ramon. You're all doing so much for the desert. Please don't spoil what spoil FF7, a game that came out in 1998. Damn. Don't. Don't YouTube anything. Aside from that, I also have some other business to discuss with Sino. Some of us weren't born then, Ben. That statement just made me age considerably. 
like I looked down at my hand and I saw several wrinkles just form. Master Lord Kusanali has allocated many resources to support and develop the desert. I've done some business for her, and part of it required the assistance of the Aramites. Speaking of Sephiroth and Kingdom Hearts, did you know that he was voiced by Lance Bass from NSYNC? In Kingdom Hearts? Did you guys know that? Yeah. He was voiced by a member of NSYNC in Kingdom Hearts 1. And he sounds really bad. <laughs> He sounds really bad in the game. But, um... Th when I first found out about that, I was like, what the fuck? But no, it's- it's- it's real. I think he has a different actor for the- the, uh, the, uh, re-releases. I applied for a few batches of educational materials from the Academia and sent them to several groups in the desert, as instructed by Lesser Lord Kusanali. I- one of I you is- the people will make good use of them. One of you is singing, I want it that way, but... Homie, that's- that's Backstreet Boys. Not NSYNC. Fake fan. FAKE FAN DETECTED! FAKE FAN! That's exactly what the people here need. Physical books and other related. I don't even listen to boy bands. For Sino and Lesser Lord Kusanali, I'm afraid we'd never be able to get our hands on them. Apart from this, the academia is also recruiting scholars that are willing to teach in the desert. Oh, did Hamburger I'll get let you redeemed? And know as soon as I have any more news. Hamburger. We must be persistent about this and maintain these resources to ensure long-term effectiveness. This is the first time in hundreds of years we've had a glimmer of hope. I think this may be the turning point for the desert. Remember these words. Here lies our faithful priest, Kasala. His wisdom is a miracle among the people, deserving of high praise and admiration. Why is the hamburger special? Um, there's a video on YouTube of a, um, I think it's like a documentary of uh, them using like this electronic system to teach monkeys how to talk. And, um, they're like, using this system, we can, we can talk to, to Kanzi and ask him what he wants. Kanzi, what is it that you want? And the monkey goes up to the, to the, uh, to the system and then he presses a button and the system just says, Hamburger. And I think about that a lot. I hope people with wisdom like that priest will rise again among the desert dwellers. Then we'll once again see the wisdom and glory that once shook the world. But there is also a video of just... <laughs> I, think, I think it's called Hamburger Sound Effect. And it's just a one second video of somebody just saying, Hamburger. And like, <laughs> I just, I think it's really funny. Enough about us. Are you here to discuss some business, too? <laughs> is that why your PNG on size stream is a monkey? I just think monkeys are neat. Thank you for the timing. Ooh, not at all. We're actually here on behalf of you. Did not expect that to be the reason. A lot of the things I like, I like them for incredibly stupid reasons. I'm a big fan of things, mostly because they make me laugh. Oh, somebody redeemed 6969. Nice. Can we get a, a round of nice in chat? Mira wanted to write to everyone, but she wasn't sure where the letters should be sent, so she asked us to come find everyone personally. Nice. A celebration feast will be held in two days at the Grand Bazaar. She hopes that all of you will be able to attend. At the feast, We'll also be celebrating Sino's reinstatement as General Mahamatra. Nice. Thank you for the biddies. Um, yeah, all it takes for me to like something is if it makes me laugh.
I like to- I like to fill my life with funny things. Funny haha. V silly. Goofy. Wee. <laughs> Like you, like you. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Paimon thought you would only start working for the academia after the. Good usage of that redeem. Excellent work, chat. And tenor, tenor voce. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome to the universe. Celebration, feast. <laughs> I love the delivery on that. It's the first I've heard of it. What is celebration? What is feast? I don't understand any of this. I wish I was home playing children's card games. And I was right. He really didn't know. Hee ho, I hope your stream's going well. It's sure he his. He he is it, it he Thank you. <laughs> this feast is for you, Sino. Sounds to me like you'll have to be there. Sino's bare chest. Thank you so much for the 69 biddies. Uh, nice. What's my favorite redeem? Um, I will answer that question when I make partner. How about that? <laughs> it's rare to see that kind of expression from Lord Sino. You must not like feasts very much. So never? Nah, man. Nah. Hmm. Man. <laughs> Just, I need- I need to, like, have, uh, like, an image loaded up on- on Stream Deck of just- that- that pic from- from, uh, like a dragon, infinite wealth of uh, Ichiban standing naked in the beach, looking out to the sea, just being like, "Man, no, not really." But I'll go. No, well, I still have a lot to handle here. Besides, I need to look after Miss Sataria in the desert, so I'll have to pass. I'm afraid I won't be able to join you. Although, if you'd be so kind, please give a message to Miss Neely for me. The message is. The message is, the message is, what I learned in bl boating school is, blankety, blankety, blank. I'm sorry for how I treated you before, but now I understand the beauty of your dance. It's like a light shining in the sky. Oh, I, I was almost right. You and the art you symbolize are not only beautiful, but also lively and powerful. So much so that it was prohibited. Hey, Ben, you know what's funnier than 24? <laughs> 25. Please keep dancing, and someday I'll be able to appreciate your art in person. The message is ravioli, ravioli, give me the formuoli. Okay, we've got all that down. Our job here is complete as well. Oh, Sino, remember, party's in two days. Make sure you're there. Got it. Wait for the feast to start. Nothing else important happened. I'm not gonna say, brother, this guy stinks, because that's Alejandro's thing. God, it, it still fucks me how there's some people that just haven't watched Spongebob. So... Like it, it's just, it, it, it just, it just mind boggles me. If you haven't watched SpongeBob, how could you? There's so many that like it's, it's just, it's just telling how bril brilliantly written that show is, that like people can just quote it endlessly, and like so much of the dialogue just never gets old. Like, the first couple of- like, every season of Spongebob before the movie, and including the movie, but all of those, some of the best comedy writing on TV. 
Like, legitimately. Like, it it outdoes some straight-up uh, sitcoms. Because it's just... Like, the jokes always fucking hit. Like, a sh there's no show that's just, like, as quotable as Spongebob is. I watched it- I watched Spongebob in English. There's even, like, s like, even the smaller scenes between, like, the non-important characters are all funny. Like, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man?! <laughs> you, you what? <laughs> How am I supposed to enjoy my food without my drink? <laughs> hey, I just got my license. Hey, I'm gonna get mine too. Hey, I doubt it. <laughs> I just love it when... When the- when the bits are just, like, mean for no reason, it's just so funny. That show is so great. Mr. Krabs is techno arc? Yeah, where Spongebob thinks Mr. Krabs is a robot. Oh, these aren't pies. They're- <laughs> they came from a bomb factory. They're bombs. <laughs> I think that episode got banned, actually. <laughs> Even though it's so fucking funny. I think it ends with Squidward getting a pie thrown into his face and then he explodes. Did the- did the episode where Spongebob swears get banned? Because that one also has so many fucking bangers. I know the Panty Raid- No, the Panty Raid one... Was... God, that's- That's the episode with... Art thou feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? God, there's so many good lines in that episode. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Oh, I'm feeling something! No, there's no way the swearing one got banned. Yeah, I know, I know, I think Penny Ray did get unbanned a few times. All right, I have to wait until nine, 1900 hours. Mr. Krabs mentioned. <laughs> God, in the squeaky, the squeaky boots episode, which was literally just SpongeBob's version of the Telltale Heart from Edgar Allan Poe. Have you finished those errands? <laughs> Have you finished those errands? 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 Everybody's already here. Looks like we're the last ones to arrive. Like, I think my favorite joke from the swearing episode is where SpongeBob's like, Squidward smells, and then he adds good under it. <laughs> it's, it's so fucking good. Here, here. You like Krabby Pet? Does this look unsure to you? Ah, there you are. I'll get you, Pinhead Larry. Who you call Pinhead? Well, look who finally decided to show up. Zerker, what Dia said was what I'm saying to you. You look like you came here immediately after finishing up some work. I'm very happy to see you here. 
Was was the Pinhead Larry one where, uh, um, like, something happens and Patrick falls into a hole that SpongeBob is in, and he rolls down going, Hi, SpongeBob. Yeah, I know the Finland joke was from that one. But I, d I remember Patrick rolling down a hill and then... Oh, that's the Doodle Bob episode, you're right. I wumbo, you wumbo, he, she wumbos, the study of wumbology, it's first grade, Spongebob. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. I propose that the last one who arrived be put in charge of today's speeches. Nah, there won't be any speeches today. Oh, really? Well, even better. Come join us over here. Let's share some great food and drinks and chat about all sorts of fun things. Can I do a Mr. Krabs impression? Sponge boy, me Bob! I've overdosed on ketamine, and I'm about to die! Everything looks quite good. Wow! Hyman can't wait! Traveler, just look at all the delicious food here! What season was that? Uh, it's one of the newer ones, I think. And of course, one of my favorite lines. Um, it's so delicious. Oh, this grilled meat tastes amazing. It's like not even a Squidward line, but it's with his voice because it's one of the squid people that says it. Who goes, playing with a reef blower. <laughs> but it's fun. The food was specially prepared for you by everyone in the Grand Bazaar. And we have gifts that were sent by the residents of Sumeru City when they heard we were holding a feast. Canned bread is also up there. Wow, they have it! <laughs> Canned bread! <laughs> it's so good. Everyone that came said that you saved Sumeru and wanted me to thank you all on their behalf. Ah, feels kind of nice to be seen as a hero. I could get used to this. Canned knowledge! Being a bodyguard is also a hero's job. You've always been amazing, Dia. <laughs> My lady sure has a way with words. Thanks. I'm glad to hear it. I've seen so many meme versions of that scene. Like, wow, they have it, motherfucking Newports. <laughs> and I'm happy to meet everyone that participated in the great plan. Don't mention it. <laughs> Come to think of it, we've really done something impressive together. It's unbelievable. We owe it to our abilities. And luck. Luck is a skill, all Haytham. Really? Why do I remember everybody thinking that luck was against us and feeling like we hardly had a chance of succeeding? Which SpongeBob character am I? Um, I'm, uh, I'm the one that walks into the Krusty Krab and says, Rev up those fryers, cause I'm hungry for, w wait, my leg! That's how I remember it too. It's luck that brought us together, and it was luck that let us form a team. Then, it took even more luck for us to formulate a plan and implement it successfully. Moreover... Judging from the results, everything worked out well. I'm plankton coded. <laughs> Not when I shifted to maximum overdrive! Yeah. Everyone gave it their all when it mattered most. It was almost like a performance. We took the stage and put on our best show. Everyone played their part, and thanks to everyone's efforts, the performance was a great success. 
So, would you say we're good actors too? It's such a blessing that Lesser Lord Kusanali was able to return to power at the Academia. I feel like... I mean, I... I, I do say ravioli, ravioli, give me the formioli a lot. But I don't think that makes me plankton coated. Yes, even after being abandoned and neglected so many times, she's finally returned. Where Gary was a god and he spoke and shit in a robe. That was, um, he was, that was in his dream. Like, Spongebob was going into people's dreams. And in Gary's dream, he's, like, super well-spoken and in a library. And then Spongebob runs off and he's like, Farewell, you little peripherand! Carve, thank you so much for the sub. And, uh, Ira and No Selano, thank you so much for the biddies. Uh-huh. Lesser Lord Kusanali once seized all her power in a great disaster, which resulted in her losing all her wisdom and memories of the past. The Academia basically abandoned her because of it. This should be something everybody should remember. Huh? You look surprised. I didn't say anything wrong, did I? This is going to be a bit of a hot take, but I think the Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy episodes are some of the best ones. No, everything you said is correct. Th I'm glad you agree, I'll hate them. <sighs> That's good. Something wrong? Yeah, what's with that face? You knew all of this already. <clears throat> Even if those two giants of the academia are here, I still have to say it. Every villain is lemons! Yeah, that, that episode was so good. You want to see me run to that, that boulder? You want to see me do it again? Those sages really have some nerve. 500 years ago, Lesser Lord Kusanali used all her power for the people of Sumeru. And what did they do in return? Man Ray is one of the best characters in Spongebob. He's just like a guy in a, in a suit. Like, he's just a human in a suit. It's, it's like, it's so fucking funny. Like, his, I love I love the fact that his design is just, like, so ill-fitting with the rest of the uh, the characters. And at one point, he removes his helmet, and he's just, like, completely headless. I- he keeps talking about Greater Lord Ruk- I don't know how to say that word. Um, who- I still don't understand what this is, who this is. What secret? I don't get it. If you bite the hand that feeds you, don't act surprised when it turns into a knuckle sandwich, right, Sino? Perhaps I shouldn't say this, but their treatment of Lesser Lord Kusanali calls for a more severe punishment. You could simply tell Lesser Lord Kusanali that you wish to have Azar and his accomplices severely punished. The previous Dendro Archon? What the fuck are you talking about? It's only ever been Lesser Lord Kusanali. I respect our deity's decision, and won't interfere in any way. While we're on this topic, why didn't you accept the Academia's invitation to become the Grand Sage? Uh, I wouldn't- I wouldn't look into joining improv anytime soon, chat. Are you trying to say that I'm fit to be a sage? <laughs> Not at all. But every person handling this election process has said that you are the most suitable candidate to lead the Academia right now. Why? Because he dethroned Azar from power? <clears throat> Could you try to put it another way? This is a good thing. The girls are fighting. It sound like I overthrew Azar the girls are fighting. Personal gain. But seriously though, I always wondered if you had some personal motives behind it. I did have my own motive, but it had nothing to do with being a sage. If the rules of our nation were suddenly cast by the wayside, then it wouldn't be long until chaos ensued. I have by that, Whoops. you mean your life working as the Academia's scribe. Precisely. Uh -huh. 
Wait, is that all? So that's the only reason why you joined us and came up with all those plans? It's reason enough. I just love how this man overthrew an entire conspiracy just so he wouldn't have to do extra work. Like, that's why he's the best character in the game. You've certainly got quite the personality. You flatter me. Like, imagine, 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 um, overthrowing your entire, like, system of governance just because you don't want to have to do extra paperwork. All right, then. How about you? You've already resumed work as the General Mahamatra, right? It's so much effort to be lazy. I, I, it's just 10 out of 10 character. That's right. Will you be happy with that life? It's not about being happy. There are merely a lot of things that I must do. I think we should all fight for the comfort that our lives gives us with the same level of fervor as I'll hate them. Even so, keep your spirits up and try to be happy, okay? And try to smile more every day. Work, just like I'm doing now. Work as hard as you can to be as lazy as you can. <laughs> Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. Talk to everyone at the feast. Wow, this party is bumping. Ah, there you are, traveler. Well, how is it? Are you enjoying the feast today? If there's anything you're unhappy with, just let me know. I'll be sure to take note of it. We could use some music. <laughs> That's good. N no. It's the first time I've ever invited so many exceptional people to one place. I was a little nervous myself. You see... Every guest here is quite extraordinary. It's unbelievable that we've got everyone to gather here. Almost like a fairy tale. Make sure you live it up tonight. I'll be happy as long as you're enjoying yourselves. Read their minds with Nahia. Yeah, I'll um I'll switch to her I'm right after this cutscene. Think of me this way. If I have a chance in the future, I would really like to invite her to one of my performances. Nahida, yeah, I, I knew who you were talking about. I can't explain why, but I just feel elated right now. Thank you. He was great. Good character. Yeah, let me just, um... Let me just do this. I don't have Nahida. The atmosphere here is good, and everything is delicious. <laughs> yeah. I don't often come to such places, but it feels quite good. I have a lot to handle these days. Otherwise, I could show you around. I don't want to be escorted around by a cop! <laughs> There's always next time. We're friends after all. This feast is pretty good. I like it. A man of few words, this one. My lady, the grilled meat over there is delicious. Have you tried it? Yes, I also tried some fruit just now. Oh, they're very sweet. What an amazing place to relax. No wonder everybody likes to rest at the Grand Bazaar. You said it. Oh, look who else is here. Hello! Oh, I'm so happy Nilu invited everybody. Oh, now I have the chance to meet all the heroes. Uh, I do need to build Sino eventually. Hey, less of that polite chit-chat, more eating and drinking. The feast is about having fun, not stuffy formalities. What's, what's the, what's the, uh, team that you... Uh, he's good with. What what do do people usually uh aggravate? Okay. Sino with Nahida. Cool, I'll just use my Nahida. 
Baiju Kale Kuki. Okay, I have all those characters. I seldom participate in such lively gatherings, but the atmosphere here is quite good. I thought you might find this boring. No. This gathering today has a unique meaning. The Grand Bazaar is lively because the people here feel happiness from the bottom of their hearts. <clears throat> Unlike the farces at the Academia, that happiness is an emotion that'll be forever alien to those bookworms who have driven themselves insane by studying. Hmm. I seem to have taken both keys when I left the house. Hmm. Oh well. <laughs> Kave reference. Hey, what's wrong? Your head is starting to droop. Oh, him EP. Hey, you can't just fall asleep here. Paimon will go find something delicious for you to eat. You wake up once he puts something yummy in your tummy. Of course, just wait here for Paimon. Is it because I didn't sleep well last night that I feel sleepy all of a sudden? Or is it because I'm too full? Huh? Seems like someone's- Oh no, the- the filter! I'm being trapped in the mind palace! <laughs> it's me! Oh. Hey. We- we mind melded again. <laughs> mind crush. Mm -hmm. You may blame me for being a bit too self-indulgent. Hey, what's up? I was thinking about talking with you, and the next thing I knew, I had made a connection with you. The connection between us is amazing. It's like Flora and the fence it grows upon. So true, Umfi. I really wish they voiced these lines from Traveler, but I guess that was... Not possible. I heard there's an amazing celebration feast today at the Grand Bazaar. I wanted to have a look for myself, so I snuck in. And August, thank you so much for subbing. Hey, man. How you doing? Lately, I've been so busy dealing with all the fallout from recent events, so I really haven't had any free time. Although you've already helped me with a lot, there's still one more thing I hope you can help me with. I need you to kill someone, Traveler. Please say thank you to everyone for me. Oh, that too. Oh, is it not convenient for you to do that for me? But if I just show up all of a sudden, people will become all quiet and stiff, won't they? What if I end up scaring them and ruining this wonderful feast? That'd be the last thing I want. Why is he named Dip? Because he's a dip. <laughs> Mind crush! You said I should go thank everyone as myself, right? So, I've decided to borrow your body for the time being. Please don't blame me. The floor also climbs up to the fence to get closer to the sky. Uh huh. Oh. Flower. Shrug. Everyone! Are you awake now? Paimon was just about to bring you the food! It's me. Huh? That voice. Nehida? Uh, hold up. What's going on? <laughs> Everybody... 
Like, I love it's like, Nahida's like, oh, well, what if everyone freaks out over this? And it's like, Nahida, if you didn't come here in person, they wouldn't be freaking out like this. I didn't expect to have a conversation with the consciousness of Lesser Lord Kusanali in the Grand Bazaar. Interesting. Is this also a part of the feast? No, no, of course not. Are you... Lesser Lord Kusanali? Hello, Ayla. You know who I am? Yes. Oh, that delivery was really good. Every one of you. Milu, Alhaven, Sino, Dia, Paimon, and Dunyarzad. Lesser Lord Kusanali? I took the liberty of occupying the traveler's body so that I could thank all of you in person. Thank you so much for rescuing me. Even if that meant placing your own safety in peril and taking the risk of becoming enemies with the Academia, the Sages, the Doctor, the Balladeer, and even the entirety of Sumeru. Without you, without any of you, I would have been in a much more difficult situation. Had you not helped me to resolve the crisis, not only I, but Sumeru and even the entirety of Tevat would have suffered great misfortune. People refer to you as the heroes who managed to rescue a god. I'm quite fond of this name. It not only explains your identities, but also bears witness to your relationship with me. Please, allow me to present to you my most sincere gratitude. Lesser Lord Kusanelli, you... She just says T.Y. So and Samaru, then disappears. And I, I... I didn't even have a chance to do anything for you. You don't have to do this. Dunyarzad, the suffering you endured during your illness is also proof of you being with me and praying for me. Thank you. You don't need to be so ceremonious. It's always been my duty to protect you. This is how the relationship between the Academia and Dendro Archon should be. We just did what was necessary and set things back on the right path. You're an Archon, but you act so humble. You really don't need to be so polite with us. I... I'm honored to have been able to take part in this plan. I hope you like the dance I dedicated to you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much. Am I gonna stream the Fontaine Archon Quest too? Probably not. Do I voice someone from League? Yeah, I voice uh, Grimbles the Dwarf. He's a super secret uh, champion that uh, only alpha testers can play. He's a mid lane, bottom, jungle, top ADC support. Are you awake? Did you rest well? After Nahida left, you ate a lot of food. You've become a glutton. But it, it would be nice to to voice a League of Legends character. I am a, a MOBA character. There's a game called Eternal Return. That's like a MOBA battle royale. I'm a character in that. Hmm. That just means you still have a lot to learn from Master Paimon, the Sage of Gluttony. All right. Since you're awake now, should we go and have a chat with Nahida? Did I do the Kave date hangout event yet? You should be in the uh, academia right about now. To, to answer... To answer your question, in order to do that hangout, I need to do Alhatham's story first. And in order to do Alhatham's story, we need to beat this part of the Archon quest, the one that I'm doing right now. So, no. Not yet. We're working towards it. Do you think you're going to continue Genshin after all the Sumeru stuff at all, King? Probably not. I mentioned it in an earlier stream, but we're going to do I'll hate them story stuff, uh, Kaveh's hangouts, and then I'm going to take a break from Genshin. Because I know that there's like 900 of you in here, and you're probably here for this game, but um, the story is... It does wear on me a little bit. 
just d not like the content of the story, but how it's delivered. There's so much talking. And I'm very gameplay focused. So I... That's why I want to, you know, play games that are more gameplay. Uh, Killjoy Julian, thank you so much for the sub. When do I think I'll do I'll Hate Them Story? Probably the next stream. Or the next time I play Genshin. Will I continue if there's another Kave event in the future? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <sighs> what a fantastic night. I'm still immersed in all the happiness and joy, like a candle floating on water. I I have enjoyed some I have done some of the world quests in uh, in Inazuma. Um I really really hate that they're unvoiced. Um and like they were all right. Were I, was I playing Genshin before voicing Kave? Nope. My entire the ent I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't play this game until I booked any character in it, and that includes NPCs, like either an NPC or a playable. I don't care if I can hear myself in the game, I'll play it. And then I booked Kave, so that's why I'm playing it. Um, and I'm doing the same thing for uh, Honkai Star Rail. And I might do the same thing with ZZZ, but ZZZ really, really appeals to me as a gamer because it is a roguelike with a urban fantasy street aesthetic, and that ticks a lot of my boxes. I love roguelikes. I love uh, street aesthetics. So ZZZ does, does a lot for me. Uh, favorite act? So far, Sumeru. Um, and no bias. It just... The story it's told has been so much more interesting than, uh... Than any of the previous ones. Um... And, like, uh... I think... Liwei has some good parts. But Liwei felt like a murder mystery whodunit, but without the murder mystery. If that makes any sense. And Sumeru felt like a revolution uprising kind of thing, but without the revolution uprising. I've heard very good things about Fontaine's story. Um, but Sumeru really, I feel like it, it did, uh, it did what it what needed to do, and it did it well. Like, I think that the, the story beats were all good, uh, the stakes were good, the twists were good. Um, all the, like, the only problem that I really had with this story was how Wanderer is the antagonist, but if you didn't play the event, it's kind of... It kind of lessens the importance that he has. Because I'm like, oh, he's just some asshole. Like, I don't really know who this kid is. I think, um, Sumeru is when... I'm, I'm not, I don't want to, like, speak on behalf of the devs. But to me, it feels like Sumeru is when they really figured out, like... They they hit their stride in terms of the story that they wanted to tell. Um, because I feel like Inazuma and Liwei, and I guess Monstad as well. Um, I feel like they wanted to do something bigger for those, but they were like constrained for either because of time or because of resources. But in this one, it feels like the story was, like, it fit with what resources they had. And, um, like, it works. It works really well. After recent events, the Akasha can no longer function as it used to. I've given it some thought, and have decided to shut it down permanently. Like, Liwei, um... 
I also kind of don't, like, what I remember of Leeway is that, like, oh, we're gonna go see the Archon, and the Archon's this dragon. Whoops, the dragon got killed. We need to figure out what, who killed him. But, like, it felt like half the, like, 90% of the time in Leeway, it felt like I was just running around talking to people that didn't really have much bearing on the murder mystery. I mean, I met a lot of characters, but it didn't feel like I was helping solve a murder. And then I fucked around with Zhang Li, like, shopping for stuff. And then all of a sudden, uh, a child, and then a giant, you know, survivor of the Archon War, and then, like, all of this shit, it went from zero to a hundred. And it just, it didn't feel, it was really weird. It started with a whodunit murder mystery, and then we were fighting on a floating castle against a giant squid water monster. And it didn't feel earned, you know? It, it felt like they lost track of the whole murder mystery angle from the beginning. Um, and Inazuma, like, I felt like it was supposed to be about, like, revolution and, like, rising up against, uh, the, the government. But it didn't really feel like we were building a revolution. It was just, like, Ayaka and, um, and, uh, Fire Boy. And they were like, yeah, we need to do these things for the revolution. And it just felt like I was running errands for them. And then we hung out with Kokomi. Toma, yeah. Um, and then we went back and then we fought uh, Raiden Shogun and that was it. It didn't feel like we were really overthrowing the government. We were just hanging out at a tea house. Uh, and then we fought uh, Raiden Shogun and then that was it. But this is definitely not a bad thing. Even from the beginning, I've been planning to shut it down. Yeah, Inazuma had good potential. I feel like Sumeru is is the first time that they had good potential, and then they actualized it. The Akasha centralized administration of knowledge has always restrained people's curiosity and curtailed the number of paths available to them. I don't think this is good for Sumeru. I don't. I like just to just to clarify. I don't. I'm not talking ill about Hoyoverse at all. I think that they like Sumeru has demonstrated that they know how to tell a story. Like, they know how to, how to, like, do this stuff well. To me, it feels like the previous stories, they just, like, ran into trouble either by scheduling, or there was just development issues or something, and it didn't let them achieve the kind of story that they wanted to tell. I feel like this game could really benefit from, like, maybe, I don't want to say, like, a whole Realm Reborn kind of, like, remake, but I think they should go back and maybe, like, uh, polish some parts of the older arcs. Because I think, uh, like, FF14 did do that. They cut a lot of the fat from that story to make it easier for new players to get into it. And I think this game could definitely use something like that, too. Because, you know, as the story gets bigger and bigger and bigger... It'll be harder and harder for newbies to, like, get through the early stuff to get through, to, to, to get to the good stuff, you know? And I think with what they've learned with, like, Sumeru and Fontaine and all that, they could definitely make the earlier stuff uh, a lot more concise and a lot more, make it flow a lot better. Like, I think they've learned a lot, and I really want them to go back and apply that knowledge to the older stuff. Although people may initially feel a little uncomfortable with the loss of the Akasha, they will soon understand that this life is more suitable for them. I like the last act of Sumeru. I mean, fighting Wanderer was really sick. That was a cool boss fight. And as for the future of Sumeru, I'm preparing to regain control of the Academia. Thank you, Chichilla. I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. The former sages have received their punishment. But the new sages have yet to be selected. I will oversee the process personally. I hope that the new six great sages will be more focused on academics. Sumeru needs such leaders more than ever. 
No, I'm just grabbing some more uh, water. Um, Sumeru does feel like the first time that if that the stakes of the world have really rised, you know. It I, it feels like there are like, that's not to say the the um, the other parts had like no stakes and no consequences, but this one definitely feels like there it's had the most consequences. Like, that my actions have had a lot of repercussions on the world. Like, we literally erased somebody from existence. Um, how much of your range can you change from training? Uh, if you... finish studying for my exam tomorrow. Super nervous. GN Ben and everyone. Uh, good night, Akitoyas. And, uh, good luck on your exam tomorrow. Thank you so much for the biddies. Um... Uh, if you're getting into voice acting, don't focus on your range. Focus on your acting. Range is literally just an extra bonus. Uh, range doesn't define your skill as an actor. It's literally just an extra thing that you can do. A lot of actors uh, literally book all of their work with just their regular voice. You just need to learn how to act. Your voice is a unique weapon that only you have. Learn how to wield that weapon to its fullest. Then you can branch out to other weapons. Once you know how to act in your regular voice, it becomes infinitely easier to expand your range. So just work on your on your base uh, voice. I promise you, it'll work out the best. The other big issue is the people of King Deshret. All the residents of the desert, in fact. They have been mistreated for far too long. I've already taken some measures to address this. It will take some time to rebuild everything, but no matter if it's culture, friendship, or trust, we will rebuild it. Ben, do you have any issues working with different accents? Not really. Um, there was a project that I recorded for that called for me to be British, and I recorded like maybe 18 hours of it, and that was a struggle because I... I feel pretty comfortable speaking for a few hours in an, in an accent, but further, like, the more I do it, the more it feels like I'm losing it. Like, I always, I, my biggest struggle as an actor is that I always feel like I'm not being consistent. Um, that, like, uh, every line that I'm delivering, it's wildly different from the last one. And that's why I rely on my director a lot to tell me, like, hey, you're losing the accent, or hey, you're, 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 um, you're, you know, you're going too high, you're going too low, and all that stuff. Um, and whenever I don't hear them say that, like, it, I, I, I internalize it, like, oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'm losing it, and they're not noticing it. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm off, I'm off voice, and they're, they're not, they can't hear it. But, uh, you know, I've been trying to work on myself and trying to figure out that, like, oh, maybe I am on voice. It's just bad brain juice that's making me think that way. And I really just need to trust my director. Because uh, my self... My self-perception of my... Of my voice acting is very, very critical. I am very critical against myself. Um, that's why I don't really think about how good of a job I'm doing. I just enjoy the work. And hope that it will sound good. You mean, what happened after the doctor put you to sleep? You guessed correctly. The top-ranked Fatui Harbingers, up to number three, possess power comparable to that of gods. I was no match for him in that kind of situation. I wouldn't say it's high expectations. It's like... I just... I don't know. It's hard to explain. I, I'm just really harsh on myself. <laughs> I, I, I always tell people that I think I'm trash. Um, but, like, I just don't mind it, is the thing. It's like having it's like having self-esteem issues, but I'm just like not acknowledging them and I'm just uh, having fun instead. 
Because, like, it doesn't matter if I'm good or bad. Like, as long as I'm having fun, that's what matters to me. However, in spite of the bad situation, I still managed to make a fair deal with the doctor. And, uh, a lot of people have said that, like, Oh, Ben, it sounds like you're having so much fun with your- with your reads. And it's like, that's because that's the only thing I'm worried about. <laughs> I'm just here to enjoy it. And I don't care if it sounds good or bad. I'm sure you remember the entity that changed your fate. The Heavenly Principles. Do I know what the doctor did? Like, his experiments? I don't. I'm guessing that's like an extra bit of lore that I need to explore for. In fact, I know there's a comic the that they did with Kale. Since the Conria disaster 500 years ago. A useless point is leverage against the doctor. I told him that the Heavenly Principles may be awakened if I destroy the Gnosis. Although it was just a bluff, he still fell for it. What do you think of streaming or VTubing as a regular job? I don't really want this to be my regular job, but I am happy having it as my side hustle. But truth be told, I don't see voice acting as a quote-unquote job, either. I see it as a hobby that kind of grew out of control. I assume that the Heavenly Principles wouldn't just stand by and let such extensive damage to its laws take place. It's like, imagine if you're, you're, you're playing children's card games, and it's just like, yeah, I love playing children's card games. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enter this tournament, just, you know, just because I love playing children's card games, and a tournament is just an excuse to play more children's card games. Whoa, I won that tournament. <laughs> what do you mean I won a thousand dollars? I'm just playing children's card games. Oh, there's another tournament. That's another excuse to play more children's card games. Oh, I won all of it too. Wow, I've got ten thousand dollars now. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna keep playing these children's card games. Like, that's, that's how voice acting is for me. <laughs> I'm just here to have fun and goof around in the booth and I I keep I keep finding success. And as for what I exchanged for the Nosis? And now because of my visa, like I can only do voice acting to earn money and to stay in the country. So like I have no no choice but to be successful. And, like, normally, I think that would cause a lot of people to, like, double down and hustle super hard and treat this as, like, a business. But, like, I just don't want to. It's still just a fun little hobby that, obviously, I put effort into. But I, it's always just been a fun thing. You know? It's just a, it's just a fun, it, I just love doing it. It's fun. Humblest to brag? Probably. And, yes, I'm on a visa. The exchange served as both punishment for the doctor, as well as a boon of new knowledge that I couldn't refuse as the god of wisdom. But I think the way that I treat it, the way that I treat voice acting and, like, this method of me treating it, it, it stops the pressure from obliterating me. Because, you know, my visa is literally saying, hey, if you don't have a successful career, we get to kick you out of the country. And that kind of pressure would normally crush, you know, the average bear. Um, but I, I just, the, the way that I approach voice acting, it just, I don't let it get to me a lot of the time. Obviously, there are days where I feel the, I feel the heat a little more. Um, but 90% of the time, I'm just, I'm just vibing. He's still in a coma. I've hidden him like how one would hide a feather. How would one hide a feather, Nahida? I know you have many misgivings about him, but as someone who had become a god, he has retained a number of very useful features. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't do any evil. What was the first role I ever booked? Um... Do you mean in like an original thing, or...? Actually, no, I'm not going to talk about that other stuff. Um, the first original role that I booked was in a game called Vector Thrust. Um, it was a jet pilot game. Much like Project Wingman, but not super great. And I was a bunch of characters in that. And that was like the first like official thing I think I voiced in. In addition, there are still some mysteries left in him. 
Some things may be very clear from my perspective, but he has still yet to understand them himself. Would I do I prefer original to dubs? Um, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh, when I watch anime, I usually watch it subbed. Uh, ditto for any foreign films or anything like that. I like to enjoy things in their original language. His future will be determined by that fate. doesn't mean that I think dubs are bad. That doesn't mean anything about my opinion of dubs. It's just how I consume my media. Uh, I think that there are some dubs that um, transcend their original uh, language and become excellent uh, representations of of how the original would be on in in my language. Um, I think Cromarty High School is probably one of the funniest animes ever, but it's only funny in the dub, because the sub just can't translate the same kind of new. The the sub just doesn't hit as hit the same. Is that where you're headed next, Fontaine, the Nation of Justice? Opinion on Genshin fan dubs? I've voiced in a few of them. You can do whatever you want. I think the creation of art is great no matter where you are. The only problem I have with fan dubs is if you put them on your professional resume. Then there's a bit of a... that's a bit of a problem. Because, um... Just the, the, the general consensus for a lot of directors is that... Uh, fan dubs are a waste of time, and they're for amateurs, and yada yada yada. Like, I don't believe in any of that, but, like, we kind of have to play by the rules of the previous generation, unfortunately. As far as I know, that nation operates in a judicial system. Yeah, I like the skate dub. Uh, cause, um, Matt Shipman, good friend, uh, love him to bits. There's one line that he did where he's like, I want pizza, and I love, I love that so much. What are my thoughts on the dubbed version of Ghost Stories? Ah, yes. The one dub that everyone says is the best dub of all time. Even though, as far as, like, localization and dubbing goes, it's an example of just the worst kind of localization, because it has zero of the original project's intent. Um... I mean, Ghost Stories is fine if you don't care about Ghost Stories, like the original anime. If you don't care about it, then yeah, it's great. It's funny. Um, Does their Archon personally judge people? Th that's, that's why it's so funny when people are like, I love, I love ghost stories because it's an example of good localization. It's like, no, it's actually the opposite. It's, it's not good localization because it, none of the original story is in well, I would say 10% of the original story is in the dub. But everything else is just literally the 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 dub studio just fucking around. Like and I think the the client gave them gave them free will to do that, but like it's just it's you know the I've the the whole localization talk that's been happening lately has been just so so silly. Um, does that mean that if, for example, if someone was doing a film project for college and asked you to VA in it for free and you did it, it would violate your visa and you'd be kicked out of the country? No. Um, how do I explain this? I just need to work on as many paid projects as I can. That doesn't preclude me from, uh, from, or exclude me from doing any, uh, fan stuff, or, like, but, like, the thing is, I, ha I don't have much time in my day, and I try to, like, I have to focus on the things that will work for my visa, as opposed to the ones that won't. Um, if I get a green card, and I'm, like, you know, a permanent resident and all that, and I don't have to worry about the visa stuff anymore, then I can do whatever the fuck I want. I can literally voice act in anything. Uh, and I probably will but as of right now until i'm free from this visa i have to focus on the stuff that like quote unquote matters no there's a chief justice in fontaine 
Generally speaking, the Hydra Archon, Bosalor, won't preside over individual trials. However, even then, Bosalor will still make herself present at just about every trial. It seems that she just likes to immerse herself in that sort of atmosphere. As Archon, she still reserves the right to influence the final verdict. Anyway, let's just say she's got, uh, a very unique personality. ¿Qué piensas del término latinx? A mí no me gusta. Porque no, 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 puedes, no puedes usar esa palabra en, en español. O sea, en un... ¿Cómo, cómo, cómo usas de esa palabra en un, en un sentence en, en español? ¿Cómo aprendiste a hablar tan fluido en inglés? Uh, Vi mucha televisión americana cuando era chico. Oración, exactamente. Mira, eso, eso es lo que me falta. O sea, el vocabulario es lo que, lo que más me da lata porque... Um, estoy fuera de práctica. Pan of the Squirrel, thank you so much for six months. I've got nothing else to say. Are you sure? Isn't there something else you haven't asked about yet? Huh? You mean... About your sister. While you were resting at Gandarvaville, I took some time to perform an ermine soul search for information on your sister. What? Yeah. Isn't ermine soul a repository for all the information and memories of Tvat? So there shouldn't be anything on him or his sister. This is true in your case. Ermin Sol indeed does not have any information on you. See, this is another thing I like about Sumeru, is that we're learning this from Nahida. Um, it feels like the other sibling lore, it happened in, like, the intermission Archon quests with, um, with what's-his-face? Yuri Lowenthal's, uh, character? Uh, Dane's left, yeah. Um... And we didn't really get anything during the the nation's Archon quest. However, there must be something different about your sister. Because as it turns out, the world has recorded information on her after all. What? There is only one possible explanation. She belongs to this world. We, we came home after all the journeying. But nothing about this makes any sense. Wasn't this your first trip to Tevat? Hmm. According to the records I was able to access, your sibling suddenly appeared in Conria. After the Conria disaster, she began her journey through the Seven Nations of Tevat. But just as her journey was about to reach its conclusion, the Ermine Soul records on her suddenly become fuzzy. See, this is really cool. Like, I... I kind of wish the other nations had something like this, where, like, the plot of the nation is intertwined with the Traveler's journey as well. Good. Good usage of the story. What do you mean, Fuzzy? Did something happen to her? Instead of just like, hey, enough about this nation, let's go hang out with Dainsleff while he lord, lord dumps about Conria to us. All I know for sure is that somebody, for reasons only they can know, is deliberately obfuscating her fate. And whoever it is, if they can do that... Who knows what else they're capable of. But even that wouldn't explain how she somehow comes from this world. Something else I noticed was that according to these records, the Fatui have not classified your sibling as one of the Descenders. What's a Descender? Paimon's never heard of it. Look, I'm sure you must be curious about the information I received from the Fatui in return for my Gnosis, right? A very important part of the intel was about this world's descenders. External beings, ones that don't belong to this world. 
So descenders are just aliens then. Traveler, you are to that's fourth descender. You are the fourth alien. The fourth angel, if you will. Get in the robot, Shinji. Huh? So the Batui count three other descenders before the traveler, and his sister isn't even one of them? Okay. So Ether is a descender, but Lumine isn't. Is that what the game is telling me? Interesting. This this is cool. I like this. This is very interesting. That's right. My current hypothesis is that the first descender was likely what we now call the heavenly principles. So, and the the heavenly principles are the they're the ones that are up in Celestia and that gave out the the no sees. So Tevat is ruled by ancient aliens. Dang, that one dude from the History Channel was right all along. Millie Girl, thank you so much for the sub, by the way. As for the other descenders, I still need to verify their existence. It could take me some time. So we know that the first descenders are the heavenly principles, and the fourth descender is the traveler. Uh, so, descender two and three are still uh, a wall, as far as the story is concerned. Hyman's oh. head's about to burst from all this crazy new information. Anime Gina Lonetti, thank you so much for the biddies. And yet, even knowing all this. I'm sure he must still have a lot of unanswered questions. I must say, I truly regret that I can't help you more as the god of wisdom. There are many questions in my heart as well. I will need some time to go through each one of them. And soon, you'll also begin your journey anew. Bless you! From Sumeru. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that Heard can't Dawn be observed in the, the other room. this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. Paimon, sure glad we got to meet you, Nahida. I agree, Paimon. The pleasure is all mine. I can't thank you enough. Yeah, I was uh, that my roommate. All right, that's enough talk for today. If you ever miss me, just close your eyes. And maybe I'll appear in your dreams. Joshua, thank you so much for the raid. All right, so. No, Paimon. I know I selected the story quest with zero hesitation and all that jazz. Oh, right, I should also claim the key, yeah. Uh, but I'm actually gonna leave it here. Uh, I think starting, starting all Hatham's story quest will be, uh, will be a good place to, to start. Uh, the next stream. 
Yeah, you guys should have seen that coming. It's been three hours, and I, I need to... I'm gonna be going to get uh, food with friends soon, so... Uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna leave this right here for now. Uh, so, let's, let's start, let's start winding down from a, from a good stream. Good stream! Good progress! We got to meet the, we got to run into the boy. We got to, we got to finish up, uh, the main chunk of Sumeru. Good shit. Good shit all around. Um... I don't know when the next stream is going to happen. I think the next one will be the Spanish stream. Uh, on, maybe on Tuesday? Possibly. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to, I'll talk to Alejandro and, and like, figure that out. And once we, once we have the, uh, the, the, uh, some clarity, I'll, I'll tweet out when it's, when it's gonna happen. But now there is a VOD, uh, VOD channel, so I will start dumping all the VODs into that one. Um, and we'll... We'll, uh, it's, 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 it, the channel's gonna keep growing, guys. We are, we are, we've got some hella growth going. What's the Spanish stream for? Uh, for Spanish speakers. Wait, actually, I should test and see if this command works, too. Yeah, okay. So both you, uh, exclamation mark YouTube or exclamation mark VOD, both will lead to that channel. Uh, Mule the Galaxy Gator, thank you so much for getting a sub. Oh. Yeah, um, god, I talked a lot about voice acting then, huh? There is a game that I do want to stream when it comes out, but, like, um, it hasn't been announced yet, so. We're gonna wait until that happens, but I think there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming up as the year goes by that will, uh, lead to the same level of enjoyment that Genshin is. So look forward to that. Wuthering Waves? No. I'm probably not going to play that on stream. Unless I book a character in it, but like... Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't see it happening. Exclamation mark YT doesn't work, but YouTube does, yeah. When am I going to voice a cookie? I think when I book a character in it. <laughs> a lot of those kinds of questions are like, homie, I, I don't decide this shit. It's, it's casting directors that decide this shit. Uh, big question, though, gamers. Who do I raid? Because nobody I know is really... Uh really online. I might just not raid anybody. Nazi, Nazi isn't on. The Sunday night lull? Yeah, I might just not raid anybody. We might just, we might just leave it there. We, we don't have to raid people. You know? Offline raid for the memes. Uh. Yes, I am still playing Unicorn Overlord, but I'm playing it off stream. Uh, but I will stream every now and again. Like, the good thing about that game is that it's really good to jump in and jump out of. Because the story is just... We need to overthrow the evil man. And, like, the it's just a series of smaller stories within that. Another Uno play with the boys. We did the one, that's all you're gonna get. At least for the time being. What about HSR? I'm gonna say this one last time. And by that I mean I'm gonna say this uh, again, and then I'm gonna say it more times the more people ask it. 
I'm not going to play Honkai Star Rail unless I voice any character in it, either NPC or a player character. And that does not mean I want to I want to make this as clear as possible. That does not mean I want you guys to go and bug uh, Hoyoverse or any of the the um, the studio development cast or anybody involved in that no, game to to cast me in it. Don't do that. Do not do that. If you do that, then you're a terrible person and you will not see the light of heaven. So please don't do that. I don't want to put pressure on any of the people working on that game to cast me. Do so please don't fucking do that. Will they fire you if if I no? Will Someone said, will they fire you if they do? They can't fire me if I'm not working with them in the first place. It's just a shitty position to put someone in. It's It, it puts a lot of pressure on the studio. It, it puts a lot of pressure on the client. It makes me look really bad. So please don't do that. And generally, don't do that for anybody. Like, don't do that for any other actors. Even if an actor expresses interest in wanting to be in a specific thing, please, please don't bug the people that are in charge of that thing to cast them. Because that's just bad. It's a bad time for everybody. Um, Punk Bunny Mama and Chiala, thank you so much for the subs. You are free to wish that I be in a thing on your own time. But don't make it somebody else's problem, basically, is what I'm trying to say. I, uh, I, I especially, I especially want to book my work uh, because of, because I did a good audition, you know? Like, I want to earn all the parts that I get. And that means that I don't... I love you guys, but I don't want you guys to, like, get me a handout, you know? Because the, uh, you know, earning a part is half the fun. I'd say it's the majority of the fun. The thrill of the hunt comes from the chase, not the kill at the end. Uh, but yeah. So, you know, and I've already mentioned it again, but um, I, I'm probably going to play ZZZ. Because that that game's uh, aesthetics and gameplay appeal to me so much, and that might make me break my rule of of um, of you know doing you know the whole book a character thing. Will I play Lethal Company again? I would like to. Have I played any of the Earthbound games? Yes, Mother Three is one of my favorite games of all time. What about a Zelda? Breath of the Wild stream? Homie, I beat Breath of the Wild like three years ago. Four years ago. Five years ago. It's been a hot, it's been a hot second, man. I was thinking, I've been in a very Fallout mood. I kind of want to play Fallout New Vegas on stream. Because I love that game and it's infinitely replayable. Yeah, New New Vegas is a fan. I I love New Vegas, and there's so many. There's still so many like things of it that I haven't discovered. Like I still I still haven't done a playthrough where I ally myself with the Caesar's Legion. I've done NCR. I've done Yes Man. I've done uh, Mr. House, um, but I haven't done uh, a Legion playthrough. A uh, Krumeru is planning a new another stream. 
So uh, look out for news on that. I think we already... I suggested a game for Kumeru. And I it was I was half joking, but it was also a game that I really wanted us to play because I think it's just a really fun game. Um, and a lot of people were like, "Yeah, we'll do it. Let's let's do it." Uh, so uh, we're gonna we're probably gonna play that, and uh, it's it's gonna happen soon. I don't know when exactly, but soon. Can y'all play Barbie Dreamhouse Adventures? Uh, unfortunately not. Thoughts on Fallout 4 as a standalone or as part of the series as a whole? Ah, Fallout 4 is incredibly disappointing. As somebody who... I liked Fallout 3. I thought Fallout 3 was good. Uh, I love New Vegas. New Vegas is one of my favorite games ever. Fallout 4... It... it is good in some parts and not good in, o in, in other parts. I think it's got a good world. I think it's got some good stories Harry, here, and, here and there. Um, I think the combat is reasonably good. Um, I hate everything else about it, though. <laughs> I think that it is... It's a good game. It's not a good Fallout game. That's a good way of putting it. Um, even then, I'd, I'd say it's an... I wouldn't say it's a good game. I wouldn't say it's a bad game. It's kind of meh. It's kind of... It's kind of... Eh. I did hear about the Splatoon DLC, and I didn't know it was roguelike-based, so I might actually play it. Have I played 76? I've watched a lot of friends play it. Like, uh, that streamed it in a server that I'm in. And it, it's... Yeah, it's... The whole... Turning Fallout into, into a survival craft-em-up, I don't think is, is the way. In my opinion. Um... I think New Vegas hit the Thank sweet you. spot. <laughs> I think New Vegas hit the sweet spot where, like, it had stuff like, uh, you know, hardcore mode and, you know, having to repair your weapons and, like, crafting ammo and stuff. But once they introduced, like, oh, you can build a whole ass town with Lego, like, that's where it kind of lost me. Can you notify us sooner for all Hatham story quest? I never see your Twitter notifs before coincidentally seeing your stream. Um, there's a setting you can switch on Twitter where if I ever tweet anything, it'll send a notification to your phone. And that way you don't miss the thing. I forget how to do it. You're probably going to have to Google Twitter notification settings for certain accounts. Can, can you put it in the community tab on YT? I'll do that. If you guys are... have subbed to the, uh... to the VOD channel, I can start doing that. There's already 333 subscribers on it. Hot damn. Thoughts on Undertale? Played it. Loved it. One of my favorite games. 10 out of 10. I don't engage with the fan base at all. Where can I find the Discord server link? Sure, man. It's exclamation mark Discord. <laughs> uh, yeah, really looking forward to uh, Deltarune. Um, I think I enjoyed Deltarune somehow more than I enjoyed Undertale, and, like, that's very impressive. Because I loved Undertale. Uh, and then Deltarune was, like, somehow better. And I don't know how the fuck Toby Fox did that. I didn't think I would love that game more, but then it just is... It's just... It's just better. I don't know how. 
like, I'll tell you that as soon as the the first fight happened with uh, Lancer, and uh, Chris and Susie got into, like, position, and, like, the battle theme started, and it was, like, an actual, like, RPG fight, like, third person, that shit made me fucking lose my mind. I freaked out. Because I'm like, oh my god. This is Undertale, but with, like, more traditional RPG mechanics, like a party. And, like, god. Fuck, that game. Deltarune was so good. Uh, third Deltarune chapter isn't out yet, but soon. And I feel like Deltarune's, like, story, question mark, or just, like, the vibes, I feel like are... I mean, Toby basically said that Undertale was, like, a practice run for Deltarune. And after playing Deltarune, I 100% believe him. Even though, like, it feels weird to say that about Undertale, even, like, because it was such an incredibly good game that was very well thought out and, and designed and has a fantastic soundtrack. It is a complete package. Having Toby be like, yeah, Undertale was, like, a, a test run to see if I could make Deltarune. God. The full version of Deltarune is gonna, like, be a cultural reset. Toby literally said, it's- it's not- this isn't my final form. Or a disappointment? I highly, highly doubt uh, uh, Deltarune is gonna be anything short of superb. Because, I mean, we have the first two chapters, and they're already so much better than a lot of what Undertale does. And just the way that he's approaching Deltarune's development, where he's taking his sweet time, and he said, hey, I'm taking my sweet time on this because I want to get it right. Like, that leads me to believe that he's going to deliver. Like, I don't think Deltarune is going to be anything short of superb. And this is a story that he's been having... He's had in his brain since, like, 2004 or something. Like, I... I this is gonna be his, like, masterpiece, I think. And, you know, I'm usually not one to get super hyped about certain things. But... Nah, man. This, this man's gonna cook and it's gonna be delicious. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very excited for Delta Rune. God, and if he, if he if he if he develops like what he did for the Snowgrave route in Chapter Two, good lord. Good fucking lord. It's... Uh, that's... God. Like, if he... If he does for... The entire game what he did for... Snowgrave. The, uh, God. Just thinking about it has me all giddy. Like I'm somebody who was I did I did the genocide route in in Undertale and that was an experience already. But Snowgrave feels like it's that concept but one more step up. A Spotify playlist that is not private cuz your background music vibes. Uh that's another one of those super secret things that I won't reveal until I get partner. Uh, I felt horrible doing genocide, but um, I love that the game was aware of that. Like, doing genocide route in Undertale was very much like, I felt like the game was playing me just as much as I was playing it. And I don't think there's any... There's, there's so few games that have that vibe, you know? Where it felt like me and the game were 
engaging with each other in such a, like, tangible way. Probably don't want to do that route ever again, though. Although the fight with Sans was incredibly fun to learn. Um, VTuber update. Uh, the people that Alejandro recommended me to, they haven't reached out to me. So it's kind of stalled at the moment. Uh, it definitely, doing that route and finishing it and getting all the way to the end, it made me feel like a monster. And not many games are capable of doing that, I think. To really affect me on a level where I was like, oh my god. I feel like, like it genuinely made me feel like I was a worse person. Was my mood ruined? No, not at all. I thought it was incredible that a game could make me feel that way. It's just a testament of how good Undertale is as, like, a piece of fiction. But I definitely... I was... I was definitely very pensive for a few days after that. It really, you know, it gave me the, the going out to the beach, looking out to the ocean and saying, man kind of vibes. Who's my favorite character from Undertale and Deltarune? For Undertale, probably Papyrus. Uh, for Deltarune, Susie. Susie's great. 10 out of 10 character. Oh. Um, but I also really like uh, Jevil. And Spamton, uh, because not because they're funny, haha, -ha, uh, silly boys, uh, but also their fights were incredibly fun. I'm very like as I've mentioned before, I'm very gameplay focused. I, I vibe a lot with gameplay stuff, so good boss fights make me really enjoy characters. I haven't played Delta Rune on stream. I probably won't because uh, I'm already I already have plans to play the full version of it when. Uh, uh, when it comes out, uh, off stream with uh, somebody else. Is Susie a dinosaur, an alligator, or a horse to you? Uh, I'm pretty sure she's a dragon. Like, I think she's supposed to be a dragon. Is there any game that has lots of story and character depth that you could recommend to a Genshin player? <laughs> Specifically to a Genshin player. Um, if you want a really good story... Well, okay, let me ask you this. Do you like sci-fi? If you like sci-fi, play 13 Sentinels. That is one of the best stories in recent memory. Um, but as far as... I mean, if you're a Genshin player, you probably like fantasy and all that jazz. I don't know. There's too many games that I really like. If you want a masterpiece of storytelling and writing, play Disco Elysium. Uh, but it definitely is nothing like Genshin. <laughs> and it is probably going to leave you feeling very, very sad. But Disco Elysium is one of those games where I I think that everybody should play it at least once. I had a friend that asked me, what's one game that you would recommend people play once before they die? And I think Disco Elysium is one of them. But I will tell you, it is a very heavy game in terms of subject matter. Uh, it deals a lot with grief, and despair, depression, uh, alcohol abuse, relationship troubles. It's a very grim game, but it has some of the best writing I've ever seen in a video game, and also some of the funniest writing I've ever seen in a video game. It is genuinely a masterpiece of fiction. Like, 10 out of 10 game. 
Um, what game has made me the most sad? Probably... Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I want to say... Metal Gear Solid 3. I cried so much at the ending of that game. Is Persona 3 scary at all? I wouldn't call it scary. And what a joy it's been. Wishing you well, my friend. Rat! Thank you so much for the sub. Yeah, I wouldn't say Persona 3 is scary. I mean, it does deal with some pretty heavy subject matter. Um, It will make you feel emotions. But it's not gonna... Five Nights at Freddy... I... Jump scare you. There's not gonna be a robot that goes... Yeah, Persona does touch on heavy uh, subjects, but I think P3 is probably the heaviest. Not, you know, not counting, obviously, Persona 1 and 2. 2 is by far the, the, the heaviest story. Um, but 3 is definitely goes into some dark places that some people might not be ready for. But I, it's, one, it's my favorite Persona, so... If you want a really good story, then Reload is fantastic. Can you recommend some open world games that also have co-op made similar to Genshin if there is one like that at all? Genshin's kind of its own thing. If you want the game that influenced, I mean, that inspired Genshin, then that's Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, by extension. Those two games. Have you ever met a similar personality to all Hatham's in other games? Have you ever met a similar personality to Kaveh's in other games? I don't really pay attention to that those kinds of comparisons. I'm not the type of person to look at a character and be like, Wow, that's just like other character. No. I treat each character as their own person and try not to make any comparisons. I think the most Genshin reminiscent game I've played personally is Skylanders. That's definitely a take. Not a not a bad one, but I've never really heard, seen that comparison before. Interesting. You're not a gamer? That's understandable. I do like character analysis, but that doesn't mean that it has to be have comparisons. Like, why would I compare Akihiko to Alhatham? You know? Like, there's no real reason for me to do that. Unless I wanted to strictly link it to Genshin, which I don't want to do a lot of the time. <laughs> there's a whole world outside of Genshin, guys. You have to go out there and claim it. I also don't like gotcha games, so you're a hundred. I'm I'm a hundred percent with you. I'm not a fan of gotcha. That's why I don't play many mobile games. Although recently my friends have gotten me into Blue Archive, uh, because I'm in a server full of Blue Archive fans, and they've kind of forced me to play it. And it's fun. It's all right. I I play it very absent-mindedly. Do I recommend any fantasy games? Final Fantasy IX. But for modern fantasy games, uh, let me let me think. Hmm. I'm like looking through my Steam library. <laughs> I mean, Baldur's Gate Three is obviously a masterpiece. Ten out of ten. Dragon's Dogma 1 is really good, and it's probably worth playing if you want to prepare for the sequel. Um, well, 
what else is there? Uh, the first Fable game is good. I really like Fable 1 and 2. Um... You know, the Witcher games are they're pretty good. Although, like, I didn't really vibe with Witcher 3 as much as other people did. Uh, Dragon Age Origins, if you like a good standard uh, Western RPG, those are good. Final Fantasy XIV and FF12, yep, both good games. Twelve is very political intrigue-y. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, you know what, Dragon's Dogma was a really good game <laughs> that I, I, I'm very fond of, and I'm actually very excited for the second game. I might stream a bit of that. Uh, I, I made, there's a, a character creator for it, and uh, I made Andy from Undead Unluck. He's going to be my character for Dragon's Dogma 2. And Afuko is obviously going to be my main pawn. I might share screenshots of how they look like. I don't think they're super accurate to the to the manga, but it's like, oh, this is what they would look like if they were in this game. Who's my favorite Inazuma character? Um, Ayaka. I severely lack I'll hate them in Kave content, so deprivation is making me seek out similar characters as distraction. Um, okay. But just, just so you're aware, there are characters that are also good. Like them. Like, uh, I, you know, FF14 is full of really good characters that everyone loves. Which Persona or Yakuza game should I start off with if I've never touched the series? For Yakuza, Yakuza 0. Yakuza 0 is made to be an entry for new fans. And for Persona, 3 Reload is fantastic. Um, I would also recommend 4. Persona 4 is also really good. And Persona 4 is a little lighter. You know, it's not as, it's not as dark as Persona 3. Yeah, Grahati is a fantastic character. I love him. Yep, I still play FF14. I'm fully caught up in the story. I'm really excited for Dawn Trail. Uh, I've I I'm a big FF9 fan, and the new job Viper looks like a big Zidane reference, Zidane from Final Fantasy IX, and that's why I'm gonna play a Viper, just so I can I can be a I can be a Zidane cosplayer. Four, five, then three. I feel like a lot of people have played in that order. Um, I have a lot of beef with five. I love five. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like it retreads a lot of what four did. In terms of, like, story and themes and structure. How many Final Fantasy th are there? Uh, 16 mainline games. What do I like about Ayaka? She reminds me of Virgil. That's literally it. Virgil from DMC. I don't include Type-0. There's a lot of, like... Um... There's a lot of different, like, offshoots that we could include. But, you know, I'm not gonna include, like, FF-10-2 or, like... The other... Or, like, the Crisis Core games or After Crisis. Or, um... FF4, the after years. No, I'm not going to include any of that. I thought you don't do comparisons. Uh, there are exceptions to everything. The world isn't black and white.
do I play DMC and which game is my favorite? You know, I mean, if I if I mentioned if I mentioned Virgil, of course I do. Um, I really like four, but five is probably my favorite. DMC three is also really good. I need a I need to beat FF sixteen. Top three favorite FF fourteen characters: uh, Kryl, um, Ishtola, and Estinian. Which Kingdom Hearts game is my favorite? Uh, two. Ben, when are we going to punch each other in the face in Tekken 8? I need to get back into Tekken. I've been slacking. I've been too busy with all these fucking RPGs. God. Yeah, I, I do like to talk about games. I just love games so much. Do I like Dark Souls games? Yes. I love them. Main? Uh, I mean, Elisa. Um, yeah, I... Dark Souls, like Elden... I need to go back to Elden Ring, too. I need to... I need to... I want to start a new playthrough before the DLC comes out. Do I prefer handheld console or PC? I play on PC, like, 80% of the time. Ever played Lies of P? Yep, I'm playing through it. Am I still going to stream Void Stranger? Probably. Do I play many fighting games? Yes. Uh, I'm juggling Street Fighter 6 and Tekken. What games do I not like? Uh, sports games. Like FIFA, NFL, NBA, all that shit. Don't care. I like racing games if they're like, if they're anything like Need for Speed uh, Underground. Or Mario. If, they, if it's a Mario sports game, then I will enjoy it. I like arcadey stuff. I tried to get into Gran Turismo, but like I just couldn't. I like to go fast if I'm playing a sports game. Or a racing game. Is Unbound any good, Zerker? I've been eyeing it, but I I don't understand. I, I'm not. Uh, I'm I'm hesitant to buy in. Am I excited for Kingdom Hearts Four? If it's anything like Kingdom Hearts Two, yes. If it's anything like Kingdom Hearts Three, no. Kingdom Hearts Three was a huge disappointment for me, and I uh, I don't want to experience that again. What cons am I going to go to? In May, I'm going to be going to uh, OtaFest in Calgary, Canada. Am I excited for Hades 2? Hell yeah, I am. Love roguelikes. Fatal Frame? I, I like those games, but they can be a pretty slow. Maybe I'll stream one of them for spooky Halloween month time. I, I, look, I played through KH3, and I enjoyed it. I just don't think that, I, I enjoyed it, but I feel like my time was wasted. Like, I spent, like, what, 20 hours on that game? I feel like those are 20 hours that I kind of flushed down the toilet. There wasn't enough story. I mean, it's funny because that game has a lot of story and at the same time has no story. The first 90% of Kingdom Hearts 3 is a complete waste of time. Like, every single Disney world is a complete waste of time. 
The, the story starts, there is 90% of it is filler, and then when you get to the key, the Keyblade Graveyard, that's when the story continues. It's just the, like, and it's one of those things where when you play it for the first time, you don't realize that the game is wasting your time. You're just like, oh, huh, nothing really happened in that world, but surely the next world... And that happened for every fucking world in the game. Nothing happened in any of the worlds in Kingdom Hearts 3 except for the last one. Like, literally nothing mattered. Did I not get bored? No, because the game was fun. I mean, Kingdom Hearts games are still fun. Like, the gameplay's fun, the combat is fun. It was a little easy, but I still had fun. It's just that the story was completely irrelevant until the last 10% of the game. Which wasn't a problem in, King in Kingdom Hearts 2. In Kingdom Hearts 2, all the worlds felt important. Do you ever feel guilty about indulging too much in games? Where are you, my therapist? Yeah, I feel so bad that I l enjoy the things that I love. Like, why would I feel guilty about that? I don't understand. Life is about enjoying the things that you love. If someone makes you feel guilty about that, then you can punch them in the face. If you could have a fantasy weapon, what would you choose? Oh, that's a tough question. Hmm. What fantasy weapon would I want? There's too many. There's a lot of really cool weapons. Uh, but I'd probably want a Monado from Xenoblade. From, like, the first one. Like, the Monado is, like, one of the coolest weapons ever. Do I have any recs for new gamers, like good story-based games? Uh, I mean, it really depends on what you're in the mood for. Because as I said, if you like sci-fi, play 13 Sentinels. And also it depends on what consoles you have. Um, I mean, if you're on PC, you could always just play Undertale. Although that is a little bit tough for new gamers, I think. No! I know what game you should play. Ghost Trick. Look up Ghost Trick on whatever console that you have, or, or PC. Go play Ghost Trick. Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Very simple game to play, very easy to pick up. Fantastic story and characters. That is a game that I think everybody should play. And it's very easy to play. But, superb game. One of my favorites. It's made by the same, uh, uh, uh the same developer as, uh, Ace Attorney. So, the writing is incredibly charming. All the characters are great. Fucking 10 out of 10 game. Missile is by far the best boy. Portal is really good. Really loved the first one, and the second one. Uh, I would say Ocarina of Time is probably the best if you have to play a Zelda game as your first game, I think Ocarina of Time is a good one because it was the first Zelda game to be in 3D. And it was built for people that don't understand how 3D... How, how to navigate a 3D space. But I can... I, I can imagine it's a little tougher to, to, be, to play it on a... On a... 
on a modern console because it's not really out anywhere. I mean, I said I was winding down from the stream. That doesn't mean I'm ending it, T. Uh, but also, I was uh, killing time until uh, somebody that I wanted to raid logged in. Lamau. Game convo is your fave. I'm just, I like talking about anything that's I'm passionate about. It's fun to discuss your passions. Like acting. If we were talking about skiing, then I'd also be probably spending an, an hour talking about it. Have I played any of the Plague Tale games? Not yet. I really want to. What's my favorite platformer-based game? Banjo-Kazooie. Although a more recent favorite would be uh, Pizza Tower. Hi Ben, months dot let's go. Uh Jujus, thank you so much for the sub. And yes, Hollow Knight. That game is also really good. What's my favorite chill game? Ooh. Now that's a fun question. Um chill game. I don't know, actually. Probably like Rune Factory. One of the Rune Factories. Although Tears of the Kingdom is also pretty pretty chill for me. Aside from VA slash skiing slash games, what else do you like to talk about? That reminds me of that joke from from the Looney Tunes uh, show where it's the first time Bugs Bunny met Daffy and uh, like Daffy just like walks up to Bugs and is uncomfortably close and he's like you got a stamp and Bugs give him gives him one and then Daffy's like what else you got? <laughs> And then it cuts back to, like, them talking about it, and Bugs is like, yeah, and then after that, he never really left. <laughs> yes, I played the Nier games. Automata is really good. I just realized what time is it is, and I actually need to get ready for my, my meeting. Uh, so I'm actually gonna... We're gonna raid uh, Molly, because she and the Honkai people are... Uh, are doing a, a live stream watch party for the new thing, whatever. So we're gonna go raid them. It's not actually a meeting. I'm just going to meet friends for dinner. That's the that's the meeting. I shouldn't have called it a meeting. It's just I'm going to dinner with friends. That's it. But thank you nonetheless. Uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for hanging out, for for just chilling. Uh, next stream will be announced on Twitter, as usual. It'll probably be the Spanish one. It'll probably maybe be Sumeru. Uh, Krumeru fun times. But who knows? Um, we'll just, we'll go raid Molly. We'll have fun. Uh, until then, uh, take care, everybody. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love you lots. Uh, go, let's go raid Molly, yeah.